Boswell Media Sports. It's time for Kosciuszko Whip It Playoff Baseball, and welcome to the Itala County Fairgrounds. It's game three, deciding game of best of three, second round 4A state baseball playoff series between your Kosciuszko Whip It's the Champions of Region 4 against the number two seed out of Region 2, the Pontotoc Warriors. Series is tied at one game apiece. And one of these teams is going to move on to the next round, the third round, to take on Corinth, the one seed out of Region 1. And the loser is going to pack it all up for the season. So one of these clubs is going to be very disappointed tonight uh, losing their final game of the year, and the other's going to move on and survive and advance. We're glad you're here with us on Breezy 101, the Breezy mobile app. There's an audio stream available at breezynews.com. And we've got video again tonight, thanks to Frank Chevrolet. We appreciate their sponsorship uh, for the exorbitant costs inflicted upon us by the MHSAA to do this uh, for video, but there's a link for it on breezynews.com. We've got a camera in the press box but uh, wherever you are however you're joining us tonight thanks for being a part of tonight's broadcast the whippets are uh, trying to get this third game we had game one here on friday night 10-7 Pontotoc wins game one after the whippets scored seven runs in the first and then goose eggs the rest of the way and uh but uh, Pontotoc just chipped away at it and got a five-run fifth inning to take the lead and didn't look back on a night when the Whippets committed eight errors. Then we turned around on Saturday and went up the road up to Pontotoc and played at the Holler, and we had a thriller of a ball game. It literally went back and forth practically every inning. Pontotoc scored a run in every inning except the seventh. And the Whippets had a big four-run third, but we were going to the seventh, tied eight runs apiece, and when we got to the top of the seventh, two outs and two on, senior Connor Wallace rocked one over the left center field wall for the game winning home run. And Wallace had pitched the sixth. He came out for the seventh, uh, ran into a little trouble, had the bases loaded. The Warriors from Pontotoc had the game winning run at the plate, but uh, fly out to right field for the third out, ended the game and sealed the victory for the Whippets to force this deciding game three. Welcome to the Premier Medical pregame, and let's welcome in our uh, guest color analyst tonight. He was with us uh, for a good bit of game one, and glad to have him back here tonight. Uh, Mississippi Radio Personality of the Year, voice of Whippet Softball and Kosciuszko Whippet Football, the award-winning Breck Riley. Breck, welcome back. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks for having me back. It's going to be fun. I think I might, I might work on my camera skills a little bit tonight. You know, we can, you know, there ain't much you can do here with the single camera shot, but 
we might can uh, do a little bit more. So we'll give yeah. the folks their uh, their yeah. money's worth the of angle, watching. The angle's tough. We have a high. Uh, we can't put it any lower than we've got it. Uh, so it's pretty much focused on the infield. But Breck's going to do what we can. And as he said, the window angle that we've got is pretty tight. But uh, we'll do what we can. And some people just like to, to have it up there and, uh, and see a little bit of the action, particularly at the, the pitcher and the batter. But however you're joining us tonight, uh, welcome to game three. And let me tell you, there is a huge crowd coming in here. Um, yeah, lots of folks. The student deck beyond the third base dugout is jam-packed. I don't think you could fit anybody else in there if you had a shoehorn. Uh, and there are plenty of students uh, in the aluminum bleachers there we go. on this side and uh, lots a, of Whippet fans. We got there a you go. We'll get a little shot of it. So if you're watching on video, Breck's uh, just doing some handmade camera work. There's the student deck. And they are having a good time in there. Just better have your head on a swivel with a laser line drive hit to the left side. But uh, blackout night. And uh, I think both teams got the memo on uh, blackout night. Yeah, right? everybody's going with the black tonight. <laughs> the whippets will be in black, uh, black tops with maroon. Uh, numbers and uh, Kosciuszko across the front in maroon trimmed in white, white pants, black socks, the white caps with maroon bills. And the Warriors from Ponatok, uh, their colors, of course, are black and yellow. And they wore black tops with yellow numbers and Warriors across the front and black, uh, white pants with black pinstripes and black caps. So uh, kind of similar when they're in the field, but uh, it's pretty easy to tell the the yellow from the maroon. Yeah, it's not like football or basketball where we might be uh, tempted to call out a wrong name there or something, <laughs> but I think we can probably differentiate offense and defense on, on baseball. Well, Breck, let's uh, talk for just a minute about um, about the, as the premier, premier Medical pregame continues, about the 4A bracket. Uh, as far as the north half goes, we're the only – Folks playing a game three tonight. A lot of folks be tuning in for this one. That's right. Corinth, of course, has a lot of interest because Corinth will be the opponent for the winner of tonight's game. Then in the other bracket, sweeps for West Lauderdale over Itawamba AHS and for Moorville over Northeast Lauderdale. And they uh, both won, uh, particularly Moorville, just blew out the Trojans. Uh, Itawamba, the Indians put up a pretty good fight in two games against uh, the Knights, but uh, – but they won, and so they'll meet game one on Friday. Uh, look, Just a quick look down at the south bracket. They're playing two game threes tonight, Northeast Jones and Pass Christiane, and Sumrall, excuse me, uh, Green County and Quitman playing game threes, Purvis and Sumrall. Uh, Sumrall, the number one team in the state, 29-0 and 0 now. Yeah, and, ranked nationally, I believe, like in the top and, ten. Uh, they, are, they are in the third round, but uh, the Whippets and the Warriors going to battle to see who can punch their ticket to the next round. Time now for the field conditions presented by the Itala County Co-op. And we thought we might have a chance. We had a chance for some showers in the afternoon, but they didn't materialize. Maybe just a few raindrops, so no rain. And uh, fields field has been without rain for about 12 days now. So it's a fast track. Um, grass is cut low, looks good. The sun is behind some, uh, some clouds now. And we're at about 79 degrees at first pitch. A little more humid than it was the other night, about 65% humidity. And there's a south-southeast wind at about 7 miles per hour. That's blowing out more or less toward right center field. And uh, may see that uh, subside a little bit as the sun goes down on a beautiful May 2nd. Here we are in May with playoff baseball. Yeah, and as you said, it's a great night for, for baseball. A little bit of sunlight when we start. The lights will be on. Uh, but it's going to be a, a, a great atmosphere out here for Game 3. I had some Pontotoc fans, you know, message me on the Twitter and ask, you know, is it going to be raining there? And, uh, you know, I don't know if I want to make the trip if it's going to be raining. Sure. I said, well, I said there was a chance, but I think we're going to be all clear about 7 o'clock. And uh, I'm no meteorologist, but we're all right. Very good. The Whippets are going to go with Larson Fancher to start the ball game. But we're expecting it to be, uh, you can use a lot of terms for it, Johnny Holstaff, uh, Juice the Orange. Pitcher uh, by committee. Pitcher, yeah, pitch by committee. Lots of ways to do it. In other words, you're going to try to get uh, an inning or two out of uh, every available arm. The 
the two big arms on the Whippet staff, Parker Riles and Ethan Wood, not available because of the pitch count rules tonight. And, uh, and I don't think Connor Wallace is available either for uh, two days ago. And I'm not 100% sure on that, but uh, we'll see Larson Fancher. We should, we know uh, Jacob Nunn is available. Uh, Landon Wallace, Will Carter uh, could be available among others. So you hope to get an, an inning or two, or maybe if you just got somebody who's locating some pitches and getting the other team to get themselves out, uh, that's 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 happened before in some key whip at playoff games. Yeah, last year we had a, I think it was a freshman or it was a freshman or an eighth grader come eighth in. Grader. Yeah, eighth grader come in. It was game three against North Pontotoc right here at home, and uh, Whippets didn't have any arms, so the eighth grader came in and got it done. So it's time for the Holmes Community College starting lineups. The coaches have met at home plate and have met with a three-man umpiring crew, and we're just about ready to uh, get started. More or less at the top of the hour will be a couple of minutes past. But let's go ahead and give you the starting lineups for the visitors, the Pontotoc Warriors, the number two seed out of Region 2. Their nine in the batting order had been exactly the same through all three games in this series, though they have moved a couple of players around in different positions for tonight's game. Ty Clayton, senior center fielder, leads off. Walt Gardner, who's played infield and pitcher, will be in right field and batting second. Bryce Deaton over at third base, and he's batting third. The cleanup hitter, first baseman John Robert Carnes, a senior. Jabari Farr will be at designated hitter tonight for the Warriors, batting sixth, a fifth, excuse me, Jackson Williams, the catcher in the sixth spot. Bottom three, Caleb uh, Riley Cagle, Moving from third over to second tonight, Corbin Clayton bats eighth and plays shortstop, and then Braxton Whiteside in the nine hole playing in left field. So it's Ty Clayton, Gardner, Deaton, Carnes, Farr, Williams, Cagle, Clayton, and Whiteside for the visiting Pontotoc Warriors in black and yellow. For your Kosciuszko Whippets, the Holmes Community College starting lineups, Kalen Powell always in the leadoff spot, the senior batting 398 leading the team in runs scored and stolen bases. He's got 30 now in the year, and he bats first. Connor Wallace was the hero on Saturday night. He's the DH, batting second. 377 average, leads the team with five home runs and 32 runs driven in. Ty Ramage up at uh, catcher, the freshman batting third, hitting 341. Ethan Wood at 448, batting average with 27 runs driven in and three dingers. Senior is at first base tonight, batting in cleanup. Larson Fancher, the junior, will pitch and bat fifth. He's had limited innings and at-bats this year as he's coming back off surgery just at the end of the regular season. Parker Riles will bat sixth and play at third base, hitting 326. Will Carter in left field batting seventh, the senior hitting 325. Jacob Nunn with a 309 average on the campaign, junior at shortstop batting eighth. And then Hayden Rogers, who has really been on fire through the playoffs, first two rounds, is batting ninth. The senior is in right field, and he's hitting 326 with a home run. Landon Wallace, the junior, will be at second base and not in the batting order. Powell, Wallace, Ramage, Wood, Fancher, Riles, Carter, Nunn, and Rogers for the Whippets in black and maroon, white caps, black tops, white Pants. So we'll step aside now and we'll uh, have the Prayer National Anthem here at the ballpark. And when we come back, we'll have Central Electric Power Association first pitch. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Itala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Itala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. 
When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem, you need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. Have you been putting off coming to the dentist lately? Hello, I'm Dr. Adam Middleton from Autumn Ridge Dental in Kosciuszko. We know life has been busy and routines have changed for many. However, we do not want you to neglect your oral health. We are treating patients with a mindset we have always held, that proper, regular, preventive care can help keep your mouth healthy and functioning properly. We want all our patients to have a smile they can be proud of. Please call us at 662-289-7076 for an appointment. Come see us and we will give you something to smile about. Hi, this is Stephen Franks of Frank Chevrolet Buick GMC here in Kosciuszko. I'm usually talking about the unlimited supply of vehicles, but thanks to the great business that we've been doing, we're very limited. But keep shopping us at frankchevy.com, and if we don't have what you want, we can go get it. Remember, shop us online at frankchevy.com or 662-289-4611 or come see us on Highway 35 North here in Kosciuszko. Make your driving dreams come true. Boswell Media Sports. Philip Palmer Tree and Breck Riley with you at the Itala County Fairgrounds. Game three of the best of three series, second round 4A state playoffs. Everything on the line for Pontotoc and for your Kosciuszko Whippets. Uh, Breck wanted to try to get this in right before prayer and the break, uh, but uh, going to bring it in now coming out of the break and that's to uh, express uh, sympathy on behalf of uh, the entire Kosciuszko Whippet uh, fan base, Whippet Nation community to the family of a former uh, Whippet baseball and football player Kenwan Riley who died tragically uh, on Friday evening. Yeah, I believe uh, Ken Juan uh, graduated around 2018, I believe that may, may be correctly, uh, 2018. But, yeah, as you said, died tragically on, on Friday night. And I know uh, a number of the uh, women players here played. They may have been freshmen, you know, when Ken Juan was on the team. I know Ethan Wood shared something on uh, on his uh, Twitter page about uh, an Instagram for uh, Ken Juan Riley. So then, no doubt on the mind of the uh, of the players here. And, uh, yes, definitely condolences to the, uh, to the Riley family. Back to uh, action as we get ready for the Central Electric Power Association first pitch. Final moments of tonight's premier, premier medical pregame. Uh, Larson Fancher, the pitcher, in tonight's ball game, and he has thrown all of uh, one inning in two in two appearances. As I mentioned, he's coming back from uh, injury and uh, getting that rehab. Has played a lot of JV action over the last month, but just come into varsity action right at the end of the regular season. So he's uh, struck out two in that one inning. Hasn't given up a hit. Hasn't given up a run. Hasn't walked anybody. So uh, you want to look at it one way. Uh, he's fresh. If you got another way, is uh, you know hasn't hadn't had a lot of experience this year. Yeah, he pitched, pitched a lot last yeah, year. Yeah, he's got the experience, just not so Sir. much this year. So yeah. junior, junior right-hander will face Ty Clayton first. So he gets started, and Ty Clayton's. Hit the ball well in this series. He is four out of eight in games one and two. Has scored three runs. And he takes the first pitch the other way and drops it in for a base hit in front of Will Carter in left. So first pitch swinging Ty Clayton is on board, and we're underway in the first inning. Yeah. First, Go ahead. I was going to say aggressive approach right there. You know, not often you swing at the very first pitch of a ball game, especially with a scouting report on a pitcher that maybe hasn't you know pitched as much this year. But, you know, aggressive approach from this Pontotoc ball club. Walt Gardner in now. Quite the opposite of Clayton. Gardner has struggled in this series, has only one base hit and eight official at bats, and he takes a strike in the upper part of the zone from Fancher, and that's 0 1. All right, good looking pitch there from Larson. Field entirely in shade, lights on. Just about ready to go. Here's pitch runner takes off. Ramage will throw it, throw is high, 
Tag is down, but not in time. Close play, but safe at second. First stolen base of the series for Pontotoc. They have not even attempted one before now. Yeah, just uh, not, not a bad throw there from Remage. Maybe a little bit high. It was on the mark, but if it's if it's a little bit lower, I think Nunn probably, probably able to put the tag and get him out. Ball and a strike to Gardner. Gardner pitched two and a third innings in game two. In middle relief and the pitch down in the dirt, blocked up, runner taken off, no throw from Ramage. Good eye there from Clayton to get over there to third and quickly Pontotox got a runner 90 feet away. Yeah, just got crossed up a little bit there, did, did Ramage on that pitch, you know, kind of getting outside. But a good job by Ramage to just eat that one and not try to force a play down at third. Two and one. Here it is. Off the end of the bat. Hit hard foul in front of first base coach. That evens the count, two and two. That one was a little low in the zone right there. I'm not sure that... Um, Gardner, really uh, more of a, I'm not going to say a defensive swing there, but it didn't look like he got a good swing on it. Clayton, the base runner at third. 2-2 two -two pitch. Chopped foul the other way. Over to the third base dugout. Good play by Parker. Coach Parker. Parker Riles. I mean, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Coach Parker. Yeah. Coach Parker knows uh, play it out here in front of you, and he did. He didn't wait for that ball to come into him. Still two and two. Fancher from the stretch. Pitch on the way. Gets it again off the end of the bat. Out of play over where the kids are playing between the softball field and baseball field. Yeah, another one of those that just like, looks like a half swing from Gardner. I don't know if he's just, you know, maybe just trying to go opposite field, but it just doesn't look like he's following through on that swing. Again, two, two. Came up and in and struck him out. Reliant Therapy strike out, and that's one away in the top of the first and a big confidence boost, no doubt, for Larson Fancher. Yeah, those high fastballs, for whatever reason, they just look too good to lay off of. And Gardner that time couldn't lay off of that one. Tonight's ball game, first inning of tonight's ball game, presented by Pickles Drug Store. Left-handed hitting Bryce Deaton in, and he looks at a pitch a little off the plate, ball one. Not a bad pitch there from Fancher, maybe uh, – Trying to see what kind of call you're going to get there on the outside. First inning, you are trying to see what that umpire strike zone is going to be like. That one way off the plate outside, 2-0. and oh. Clayton led off the inning with a single, stole a base, and got to third on a wild pitch. 2-0. Hit on the ground towards second. Up cleanly with it is Landon Wallace, records the out, and the run scores on the ground out, so the Whippets trade the out for the run, or the run for the out, I should say, and it's one nothing Pontotoc, and that's out number two in the inning. Yeah, good to see Landon Wallace. You know, I know he got to play in the game Saturday night, but, you know, good to see him in the game. He took one off the elbow out here in that game on Friday night, and uh, wasn't sure if he's going to be able to play, but he's going to tough it out. John Robert Carnes in here, takes one down and in, ball one. Carnes has driven in four runs in this series. Had a big two-run home run here on Friday night as he fouls one off away, and it's one and one. Carnes, a big youngster, got a lot of football scholarship interest from a lot of schools, one, one. That one left up, two and one. Doesn't look like uh, Fancher's quite got the feel of that fastball, having the command that he wants of it. Two one, comes off speed, and it's hit in the air to right center field. That one's going back, going back, and going over the wall. Hitting it out of here with a solo home run is John Robert Carnes, and it's 2 nothing Warriors. Yeah, I didn't think that one had it off the bat. He didn't, it didn't really sound like he tagged it or anything. It was a little breaking ball left uh, out. He didn't really hang it. It was a little out over the plate. And uh, Carnes just uh, shows you what he can do with that upper body strength that he has. And he touches them all. Yeah, I didn't think it had it. I didn't either. That's exactly my read of the ball. But then I watched uh, – 
the center fielder, Kalen Powell, chase it. And, of course, he's got a better beat on it than any of us. And you could see he was not going to be able to get under that one. So the solo home run makes it 2 nothing, top of the first inning. Brings up Jabari Farr, who's playing at designated hitter tonight. Two out, bases empty. Fancher kicks, delivers. Fastball down the middle. Yeah, big pitch there from Fancher. Yeah, I think Fanch and Fancher's pitch to uh, Carnes looked like a breaking ball that hung up there. Then he put it down in the dirt and really fooled far on that one. He swung way above it. 0-2, Fancher with the advantage. Another pitch. Foul tip caught by the catcher, Ramage, and that's Reliant Therapy strikeout number two on the night, and that will retire the side. Two runs on two hits, no errors, nobody left on base. Bonatok scores two in the top of the first, and the Whippets come to bat in the bottom of the first inning after we take this break on Breezy 101. Baseball season is here, and that means fun for the entire family. Atala County Bank is proud to support Kosciuszko Baseball. We wish all the coaches and players a safe and exciting year and encourage fans to get out and cheer on your whippets. Atala County Bank, a branch of Holmes County Bank, 662-290-6963. Or visit atalabk.com. Supporting our community, it's what we do. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Reliant Physical Therapy always provides attentive, focused, and compassionate care for every patient to restore you back to your functional level. Physical therapist Haley Kewen and Adam Bell, along with assistants Veronica Wolfarth and Becca Shields Hayden, offer outpatient physical therapy and post op care for all ages and circumstances. Quality care and attentive time. When you need physical therapy, request Reliant Physical Therapy in Kosciuszko in the Megs Plaza, Highway 35 in Kosciuszko. Transforming lives physically and spiritually boswell media sports bottom of the first inning about to start potatock is putting their tall lanky left-hander garrett pound up on the hill to face the whip at nine pound picked up a save in game one right here he went one and two-thirds innings in relief through 24 pitches, gave up just one hit, and struck out two as Pontotoc got the 10-7 win in game one. In Saturday game two, the Whippets even the score, even in the series at 1-1 with an 11-8 thriller. Yeah, pound here, a little bit of a different delivery. You know, not your standard delivery. He's, as you said, he's tall, uh, you know, kind of lanky, and uh, is almost a three-quarter you know, delivery there. So it's kind of hard to pick the ball up uh, coming out of his hands. So whip it, you said he struck out two batters in the game on Friday. So it was uh, maybe more of a shift because coming from Deaton, who had that big arc and curveball going to pound on Friday, that can be a difficult. But they're starting out seeing pound here. Might be a little bit easier for these whip it batters to pick it up. Pound is uh, all arms and legs when the when he starts coming forward and pushing the ball toward the plate. Uh, he's got uh, his arms are moving way out from his body, legs not a compact move at all, and that does have to be uh, tough for high school hitters to pick up. Uh, used to seeing a lot of righties, and uh, and like you said the other night uh, when Deaton was starting in game one, he had that uh, really nasty 12-6 curveball that he threw, um, threw deep. Uh, down in the zone, and the Whippets uh, swung at it a lot. They, and the Whippets, you got to give them credit in game two, really improved on the breaking ball in game two and didn't get fooled nearly as much. So here we go, top, uh, excuse me, bottom of the second inning. Pontotoc scored two. Run off RBI ground out and then a solo home run. Lefty works from the windup, throws to Kalen Powell and gets a strike way out on the outside corner. 0-1. Oh and, and sometimes you get Powell coming up there, being aggressive and swinging at the first pitch, showing some patience and he, here. And he sort of backdoored one in for strike two in the lower part of the zone. Powell in the hole, 0-2. Oh 
Here's the pitch. Got him to chase one out of the zone. Nice sequence there from Pound to get the three-pitch strikeout of Powell for out number one. Yeah, if you're uh, Pound, that's exactly what you're trying to do here. Just come in and you know go run after the whip it hitters. Got Connor Wallace coming to the plate. Connor's four for eight in the series. Has a double and the big three-run game winning shot over the fence at Pontotoc Saturday, Saturday night in the top of the seventh. And he swings at the first pitch, sends it back into the net. Foul. After Connor Wallace, Ty Ramage will hit. Pound tries to nibble at that outside corner and didn't get the call that time, one and one. Well, a little off the plate, as you said in the first inning. You're trying to just figure out what, what that strike zone is going to be for you. Working quickly, Pound rocks, puts it in, gets a high called strike, about letter high. Different umpire, but I'll tell you what, uh, than we had Saturday, but that was – Never a strike uh, on Saturday night. Yeah, it was, it was a little bit, that was a little high. One, two, and that may be where the zone is. Connor Wallace shortening, shortening it up with a bat. Catcher sets up outside, but the pitch is way outside. Back of the left-handed batter's box, two and two. Time called Carnes coming over to say something to pound. Two balls, two strikes. Connor Wallace, bottom of the first inning. One out, bases empty for the Whippets. Playing at home in game three. Here's the pitch. Came in on him, and he uh, just fisted it back into the net. Stay alive, yeah. two and two. Yeah, good job there by Wallace. Get just a little piece of it. Yeah, got, got jammed. And that's probably better than uh, what would happen if he put it into play that close to his hands. Again, two and two. Breaking ball, and it gets chopped foul. He got way out in front of it. It sent it to the left side, and again, two balls, two strikes. Booted by Coach McBride over there. We'll make that note. E. <laughs> E-10. That's what we call that. E-10. Yes. <laughs> Once again, the 2-2. Two -two. Came in on the hands again, and he popped it foul over right side over the visitor's bleachers. Pitch number eight of the at-bat coming up for Connor Wallace. Let's see if Pound hits him with that curveball again here. Kick and delivery. Came in on him, and he went the other way and flared it into right field for a base hit. That's a nice two-strike approach there. Didn't try to overswing and sort of inside-out flare into right field for the base hit. Yeah, Williams, the catcher, is uh, kind of uh, admonishing Gardner in right field. Thought they might could have thrown out Wallace at first base. <laughs> yeah, he was over there pointing at first, saying, you know, throw it in, throw it in, throw it in. They're sort of getting it back to second. Well, that's a quality at bat for the DH, senior Connor Wallace. So the Whippets have their first base runner and the hitter's time ramage. He pops it up way high foul right side. First inning presented by Pickles Drugstore. One out and one on. Whippets trying to answer two runs from Pontotoc in the top of the inning. So the sun is setting beyond left field, 0-1 pitch. Sent, would have come right back into the window had it not been for the net. 0-2. Oh Ramage has come up with some clutch hits here in the in this postseason series. He has, hitting 429, has a double. Pitch was high, and he sent it foul straight down into the plate. And the freshman coming up there just... Hacking at everything he sees. He's got to defend defend the plate, expand that area that he's willing to he's willing to swing at a pitch. Well, Remage, good looking ball player to be in the ninth grade. I think he's got a, a 
successful career ahead of him in baseball. 0-2, hit past the third baseman, down the line into the left field corner. Coming hard is Connor Wallace. He's going to be waved around as the left fielder digs it out. Throw coming to the plate, going to be cut off by the pitcher, and the Whippets have cut the lead in half. It's 2-1 to one after the RBI double by Ramage. Speaking of clutch hits from the ninth grader, he comes up with one right there. He couldn't ask for a better one. Just inside the bag down at third base. So we'll get a courtesy runner for Ramage. That'll be Eli Kemp, I believe. I don't have a roster in front of me, but I believe that's Kemp out there. Yes. They're running for him at second base. Eli Kemp running for time. Ramage at second. It's two to one. Two bagger down the left field line by Ramage. Scored Wallace, and it's two one, one out. Ethan Wood at bat. Ethan Wood, back-to-back -back player of the year in Region 4, 4A. I'll tell you, that ball was hit hard because when it got down in the corner, it bounced back, yeah. and Whiteside really didn't even have to play it because it came back to him when it hit the corner down there. So it's 3.05 down the line and left. There's one hitting the air. Bat flipped. Get out of here, two run home run, and the Whippets have a 3-2 lead. Hit that ball, Ethan Wood. We might be in for a baseball game tonight. Coach McBride trying to keep his players off of the plate there, trying to keep them as calm as he can. And the student section down there, a little student deck is getting loud, and all of the Whippet faithful that are here in the ballpark, and there are a plenty. They got loud. Ethan Wood giving them a reason to cheer in the bottom of the first. First pitch just driven over the left center field wall. The top of the football stadium bleachers. Here's Larson Fancher batting with one out. 3-2 Whippets, bottom of the first. Larson Fancher throws right, hits left. Combination you don't see very often. So left on left, the matchup here. Pound throws one way down and away, ball one. Yeah, as you said, it's not something you see with the right, left, especially where you're pitching. But the first, first lefty, probably the only lefty in the lineup tonight, if, if, unless Landon Wallace is getting some at-bats. 1-0, up and away, and it's ball two. Whippets have done something very important. They have answered back after the opponent scores. There's a called strike taken at the knees, two and one. Good fastball there from Pound. No wind now, as Breck mentioned earlier in the inning. Two one. Came in her half and got him to swing over it, missed strike two. Yeah, big cut there from, from Fancher. This is Fancher's uh, just fourth plate appearance of the year. And he hits it straight down, foul. It rolls up into uh, the grass, in the, I mean the dirt in the fair territory, but it was foul. I think it hit off the front of his leg when we hit down and or hit, off, hit off of his person somewhere. Set things again at two balls, two strikes. Pound looks over the top of the glove, gets the signal, winds and delivers. Breaking ball that really got way outside. Williams had to chase it. Counts full. Hancher working the count on Garrett Pound. Here's the payoff. And a missed low ball four. Good take there from Fancher. He gets a free pass. Yeah, I didn't miss by much. Williams, you know, going to turn around and ask the umpire kind of where, you know, kind of where that one was. It wasn't a, wasn't a bad pitch or egregious pitch there, but it's one of those that, you know, obviously Pound wants the call, but also he's probably open. Fancher chases it right there, but a good job there, good eye by Fancher, and he's got a Cooper Black yeah. at first base running for Fancher. Parker Riles. As his name called, he's in the right-hand batter's box to face Garrett Pound. One out and a teammate at first. 
Breaking ball. Throw down on the steal attempt, but it's off the bag toward the third base side of the bag and sliding in way ahead of the tag is Cooper Black with a steal. Yeah, I mean, if the throw is online, it's probably going to be a, you know, a close play. I think Black probably still beats it out. But, yeah, as you said, that one yeah, was way but off. But it was a good pitch to steal no. on that uh, breaking ball. Carnes, the first baseman, about two steps on the grass in fair territory. I mean, in, uh, on the first base side and looking at a strike there is P Riles. that counts one and one to him. One ball, one strike. Parker one for three in the series, but, boy, his one hit on Saturday night was huge. Talk about that after this pitch, 1-1. One, one. Fastball down, about shoe level high, 2-1. and one. In that four-run uh, third inning on Saturday night, he hit a double off the third base bag and expanded the lead for the Whippets, and he comes around late on the 2-1 pitch and sends it out of play right side, 2-2. Two and two. We do have a couple of folks in the, the old pickup trucks yep. out there. The pickup truck lane down yeah, there. there Got the, some the foul pole line. Some spectators foul, down there. Foul. Runner at second is Cooper Black. Still just one out in the inning from the stretch. Pitch to the plate. Just caught a piece of it coming in on him. Nope, foul tip. That's strike three. Yeah, Williams kept it in his glove there. Good job by Williams. Um, Hold that foul tip for out number two. Will Carter up. Will looking for his first base hit in the series. He has driven in a couple of runs. So I think everybody would say he's due. Yeah, you know, he started the year batting up and around the cleanup spot. You know, things changed through the, throughout the season. Breaking ball called strike on a pitch that's way outside. My goodness. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, even if, if Carter swings at that, it's going right into the first base dugout. Yeah. I mean, there's not much you can do where that pitch is. Nothing in one. Left versus right. Check of the runner. Runner taking off. Swing and a miss. Throw down, not in time. Sliding in safely. Feet first into the bag at third with another stolen base is Cooper Black. That yeah, was a good jump there by uh, Black, I think. Whippets might have had the hit and run on there. That's stolen bases 19 and 20 for Black. So now he's in the 20 club. Stolen bases with Hayden Rogers. 0 and 2. And a breaking ball that he got around off, fouled it back, caught a piece of it, stayed alive. Pitch a little bit out, but you can't, uh, it's not one you can take. Carter headed to Goodman's down the road next year. He'll be some, using that right foot. Yeah, do some kicking for the Holmes Community College Bulldogs. Runner at third. Two out, 0-2 oh, count. Here's the pitch from Pound. Hitting the air towards center field. Going back on it is Clayton, and he camps under it, catches it, and that's out number three in the inning. The Whippets answer with three. They get three runs on three hits and leave a runner stranded. There were no errors in the inning. Kosciuszko three, Pontotoc two in game three after one inning. Back after this on Breezy 101. When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem, you need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. Hi, this is Stephen Franks of Frank Chevrolet Buick GMC here in Kosciuszko. I'm usually talking about the unlimited supply of vehicles, but thanks to the great business that we've been doing, we're very limited. But keep shopping us at frankchevy.com, and if we don't have what you want, we can go get it. Remember, shop us online at frankchevy.com or 662-289-4611 or come see us on Highway 35 North here in Kosciuszko. Make your driving dreams come true. Boswell Media Sports. Video of tonight's game three from the Tallahassee County Fairgrounds available from a link that you'll find at breezynews.com. 
Video link is presented by Frank's Chevrolet on Highway 35, Kosciuszko 3 and Pontotoc 2 after one inning. I want to say congratulations to Presley Fulgham, uh, Kosciuszko uh, Lady Whippet track star, second straight pole vaulting state championship in row. She captured that on Friday at the state meet in, uh, in Pearl. So congratulations to Presley. She's out there. I've seen her walking around. Pitch up, missed to Jackson Williams, right-handed hitter. One ball, no strikes. He bounces one right to Parker Riles at third, and he's got plenty of time to set his feet and throw across to Ethan Wood and record out number one in the second. Second inning presented by Michelle Nicholson, State Farm. And in between innings there, they announced free pizza for the uh, students here at the ballpark. So there was a mass exodus from the student deck over there to the pizza tent. <laughs> yeah, and there were, there were cheers as well as the fastball misses away to Riley Cagle for ball one. One out, nobody on, top of the second. Fancher's pitch hit high in the air to left. Getting under there in left center field. Coming up on it is Will Carter. And the catch is made, and they're quickly two away in the second. We will mention also, uh, courtesy of Serve Pro, that all the Whippet students uh, got in free tonight, courtesy yep. of Serve Pro. So they were going to pay for all the students to come in. And I'll tell you what, that's one of the great things about uh, this community, about Kosciuszko, is these local businesses will step up and recognize the big moments and big opportunities, and it's good to see the response as well. A lot of students here. Tonight, called strike out her half to Corbin Clayton. Strike one, good looking pitch. That's that's some fastball command that I'm not sure that uh, Larson Fancher had in the first. And he comes breaking ball, gets him to swing and just nicks it foul over to the right side. And Fancher's ahead 0-2. He's a strike away from a really fast, clean inning. Yeah, a lot of movement on that, on that breaking pitch there he's, from Fancher. He's thrown just six pitches. And the fastball off the plate outside, one and two. <laughs> Kick and delivery. Missed down and away, and the count's even. Breck, you mentioned uh, Presley Fulgham. Also, we need to congratulate Jarrell Irving, finishing second in discus, and Raven Purnell, third in long jump. Yeah, he's had a good... 2-2 pitch skied. Will it get will it stay in play? And it hits off the wall in foul territory in right field. Hayden Rogers was coming there. He was probably still about three steps away from it, and then it hit the wall. Yeah, and if you know anything about the ballpark here, you run out of foul territory very quickly. I've been doing this for this is my ninth season doing uh, whip it baseball, and I have yet to be in a ballpark that has as little foul territory as ours does here at the at the FG. Yeah. Two and two the count. Fancher's pitch. Again, sky foul right side. New baseball out to Larson Fancher. Top of the second inning. Two out. Bases empty. Here's the pitch. That one in the dirt. That's ball three. Raymond's going to walk the ball out there and hand it to us. Pitcher. Fancher got Williams on a ground out and Cagle on a fly out with just four pitches and then got ahead 0-2 in the count. Clayton here is extending the at-bat here. 3-2. Ball four as he put it down low. Good at-bat for Clayton, and he gets a two-out walk. Yeah, you said good at bat. You know, we able to foul off a few there, keep it alive, put the pressure back on Fancher, and then Fancher not able to uh, to locate it there. So a two out base runner for the Warriors. Here's the number nine hitter, Braxton Whiteside. He's one for eight with four strikeouts in the series. You really need to get this out because you don't want to have men on with the top of the order coming up. And he swings at a pitch that's elevated and sends it back foul over our heads. Oh, I thought it went. I thought it went up in the infield. I was looking for it and seeing who was going to call for it. He said all those infields just standing there. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's, Nobody's calling going for the ball. For the ball. Uh -huh. 0 and 1. Check of the runner. Pitch to the plate. 
Breaking ball, dropped it in nicely. The curveball for a called strike two. Yeah, how much you can do with that one. That one's coming at your eye level, and all of a sudden, yeah. it just falls back across for strike two. Clayton takes his lead at first, and stepping off the back of the rubber is Larson Fancher, but quickly back on. He puts his right foot on the first base side of that rubber, checks the runner, comes set. Pitch, fastball up eye level, ball one. Yeah, elevated the fastball a little bit there. Sometimes, you know, uh, I often talk about the high fastballs being hard to lay off of. That one maybe a little bit higher than Fancher wanted it. One, two, lined, bounce, one bounce to Landon Wallace, and he throws to none at short to get the quick easy out. And there were no hits, no runs, no errors in the inning, and a man left on base. Middle of the second, score remains. Whippets three, Pontotoc two. After this, more Whippet baseball coming to you from Boswell Media Sports. Hi, this is Stephen Franks of Frank Chevrolet Buick GMC here in Kosciuszko. I'm usually talking about the unlimited supply of vehicles, but thanks to the great business that we've been doing, we're very limited. But keep shopping us at frankchevy.com, and if we don't have what you want, we can go get it. You remember, Shop us online at frankchevy.com or 662-289-4611 or come see us on Highway 35 North here in Kosciuszko. Make your driving dreams come true. Your pharmacist is more than someone who fills your prescriptions. Your pharmacist helps you understand what medications you're taking. Your pharmacist makes sure your insurance is filed correctly. And your pharmacist answers any other questions you may have regarding your medications. Hi. I'm Rob Pickle, registered pharmacist and owner of Pickle's Drugstore. It is my goal to give you the personal attention you need to improve your health and well-being. My staff and I are here to serve you. Pickle's Drugstore, your hometown pharmacy, on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Eight, nine, and one in the Whippet batting order coming up. Nunn, Rogers, and Powell. We start the bottom of the second. And hey, everybody who's watching on the Boswell Media YouTube channel, thank you. We've got a huge crowd watching this game live. Link is available at breezynews.com if you can get a hold of that and want to see the video. You may be in your car listening on Breezy 101. You'll need to be watching the game in your car. Yeah, we, uh, you know, we'll thank the Pontotoc Athletic uh, Twitter account. They put the, you know, I said, Coach Wildman, the Pontotoc softball coach and I, we know each other from uh, the years uh, covering ball games and stuff. So we uh, send him the link, and he gets it sent out to the Twitter feed. So uh, Coach Wildman in a in a big game tonight for Pontotoc, game three against Caledonia. We got Kosciuszko Whippet Softball going to get the winner of that series. So the Whippet fans yeah. and the Pontotoc fans might be seeing more of each other after uh, this one if the Warriors can win that game over there tonight. But uh, we definitely appreciate uh, any Warrior fans that might have found. I bet that maybe even some Corinth fans have found uh -huh. their way onto the, uh, the broadcast tonight. Yep, those folks way up in the northeast corner of Tennessee may be paying attention. Excuse me, northeast corner of Mississippi, practically Tennessee. South central Tennessee is what we call it. <laughs> Here's Jacob Nine, lead off the inning for the Whippets, who lead it three to two in a pitch down and away. From Garrett Pound, ball one. We've got some uh, Whippet fans watching tonight, I know in Texas and Louisiana, from one end of Tennessee to the other. 1-0 pitch, taken inside, inner half, called strike one. I know we got some on smart TVs out in the, uh, out in the, the, the Whippet Nation out there as well. Folks can bring it up on their TV and watch on the patio, watch at a, at a bar, at a restaurant. You know. Swing and a miss. Fastball about letter high, and it's one and two to none. None has been so good at the plate in this series. Four for six with three runs scored. He's been hit by a pitch a couple of times as well. So he's been all over the base paths in this second round series, and he fights one off, foul back, and it stays one and two. Took one off the noggin out here on Monday. That's right, he wore two of them, one on the side of the head and one on the left arm on uh, Friday night game one. Didn't nobody have to rock him to sleep that night. That's when you look on the back of the label to see how many Tylenol you can take in one dose. One, two's got him swinging at a pitch that was elevated, and that's 
strikeout to lead off the inning. Second inning presented by Michelle Nicholson State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I tell you who's been there for the Whippets, and that's who's coming up to the plate right now. <laughs> Hayden Rogers. You get this kind of production out of your number nine hitter. It's something that the coach likes to see. Batting 571 in this second round series, and then he just wore out Gentry pitching in the first round. He's a little late coming around on that one pitch. The outer half, strike one. Quickly, though, back to the the viewership. Uh, we've got some got some brand new Whippet fans in New Jersey who are tuning in tonight. They've watched game one, watching game three tonight. Bunts goes after it but can't get it, and he's in the hole 0 and 2 quickly. Yeah, he's trying to bunt up the first base side because Carnes yeah, he's way playing back. back. Yeah. Now the approach has to change for right fielder Hayden Rogers. Lefty pumps it in there, getting it, fouling it off is Rogers. Still 0-2. In the third inning, get to the top of the third, we'll talk about Whippet softball a little bit more. Nobody better to talk about it than the man sitting to my right as time is called. We're in the bottom of the second inning. Whippets lead it 3-2, two in the top of the first for the visitors from Pontotoc, they got a, an RBI ground out and a John Robert Carnes solo shot. The Whippets answered with three in the bottom of the first inning. RBI double from Ty Ramage and a two-run blast from Ethan Wood, his fifth of the year. Pitch on the way, 0-2. And, and he's going to line it into left field. That's going to get down for a base hit with one out. Yeah, it was actually Bobbled out left field by Whiteside. Rogers, you know, not not thinking two bases all the way. He might could have gotten it if he had been chugging two bases all the way. But yeah, Whiteside playing a little bit off the line there, and just a good piece of hitting from Rogers, who continues to be a good neighbor. Be I'll there. Tell you, I see us, but there's a trend going back to Game Two. The Whippets had some great at bats through that game two on, with two strikes. And we've seen Wallace and Rogers, and there's a leadoff flare, little line drive, opposite field base hit for Kalen Powell. And now it's first and second with one out in the top of the order here. Yeah, when you got two of your best base runners on the bases right now, one of your best hitters. I'll see if the Whippets put a little something in motion. Connor Wallace up. He singled the opposite way. Scored on the Ramage double for the first run of the ball game. Corner infielders pinched in a little bit. He swings at one. It's a little down and away. He sends it all foul. And he kind of shows a little frustration with himself there. Probably should have let that one go. 0-1. Well, kind of had a great at bat back in the uh, the first inning. You know, took the took it to a full count, like nine, ten pitch yep, at bat. Nine pitch at bat. Yeah, hit one. Uh, then it ended up coming around to score all the way from first on that tie ramage double. Pounds 0-1. Butts, but uh, foul left side. Uh, there it was. That's what they wanted with Rodgers yep. and Runners were moving. And Powell on the bases. Wheels were turning there. Nothing in two. Connor Wallace shortening things up. Here's Pound's pitch. He rips it, line, laser foul out of play over the wall in the left field corner. That one hit the Whippet football Ooh. locker room. Well, you, you could see, you feel the collective breath come out yeah. of the student deck over there. <laughs> that one's coming right for him. Count still 0-2. Pitch, he reaches out for it, puts it into center field, moving over into the gap to get it as Clayton. Runners will stay put as the ball was not hit very deep. And that's out number two. So a line out for Wallace leaves the inning up to Ty Ramage. Yeah, that time Clayton had him shaded pretty well. And as yeah. you said, he did he did have to reach out and hit it, so it wasn't a he didn't get a good barrel on it. But Clayton just had the shift on perfectly out there in center. Coach Gold McBride sends in the signal to Ramage. 
He makes a cross in the dirt outside of the right-handed batter's box with the end of the bat. Now he climbs in. Runners first and second. Called strike inside corner. Yeah, pound there just coming right after him. Oh and one. Check of the runner at second. Swings over the top of one that was low ball. Excuse me, strike two. Oh and two. Ramage was down 0-2 when he hit that double down the uh, third base. Down the third base line into left into the corner. Well, he curled one just inside the bag. He does that again. Both <laughs> the speed that he's got on the base path. Lucas could get two. Fastball hits it the other way. It's slicing over toward the right fielder Gardner, and he reads it nicely and makes the play. And the whip it strand two. No runs, two hits, no errors, two left on base, two run. Excuse me, two innings complete. And Kosciuszko leads 3-2 in this decisive game three of the second round. Back after this as Whippet Playoff Baseball continues. Flu shots are now at Premier Medical Clinic in Kosciuszko and Carthage and Trace Urgent Care. An annual seasonal flu vaccine is the best way to reduce the chances that you'll get the seasonal flu and spread it to others. When more people get vaccinated against the flu, Less flu can spread through our community. Protect yourself and your family from the flu. No appointment is needed for flu shots. Just walk in and they will see you shortly. Premier Medical Clinic in Kosciuszko and Carthage. And Trace Urgent Care in Kosciuszko. Renaissance Insurance is your neighborhood insurance partner. Renaissance Insurance makes you feel at home with your home insurance. When you hit the road, Renaissance Insurance makes sure it's with the right auto coverage tailored for you. Renaissance Insurance takes the hassle out of sorting through business insurance. One stop, complete coverage. Call Robbie Robertson, Bradley Tyler, or Michael Hatcher at 662-289-4621. Renaissance Insurance, Court Square, Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Beautiful evening, large crowd, and huge game. These teams trying to survive the second round and advance to play Corinth next weekend. Game one will be Friday. And if I'm understanding the, the uh, 2022 uh, alignment correctly, uh, game one will be in Corinth regardless of who wins. Am I right? Um, yep. Game one will be in Corinth because uh, – if Pontotoc wins, Corinth is still a one seed, so they're the higher seed. And then if Kosciuszko wins, there's two one seeds. Corinth is the lowest number division in Division One, so they get the tiebreaker. The Warriors bring the top of the order to the plate in the third. Whippets lead it 3-2. Breaking ball, it stayed up on Larson Fancher as he's working his third inning tonight. One ball, no strikes to Clayton. Clayton singled on his first pitch he saw and ended up scoring. He hits a roller to second, scooping it up as Landon Wallace and the short throw to Wood for out number one. Clayton retired four to three, and there's one out in the third inning. That's presented to you tonight by Frank Chevrolet. Yeah, Frank Chevrolet also bringing us, allowing us to provide the video coverage tonight. So we appreciate the nice folks up at Frank Chevy up Highway 35 here in Kosciuszko. Walt Gardner. Up, he struck out last time, and he chases one off the plate, swing and a miss, strike one. Yeah, that one in the other batter's box on the other side, been scooped up by Ramage. Gardner battled in his at bat, seven pitches, and struck out swinging. The 0 1 hit back up the middle for a base hit. Gardner aboard with one out, it brings up Bryce Deaton. Veteran ball player for Pontotoc. Very talented, tall young man. And Deaton is three for nine in the series. Drove in a run in the first with the RBI ground out. And Fancher calls out Ramage to, for a little conference there at the mound. And a quick, you know, kind of exchange here. Kind of go over some pitches and uh, how they want to handle things here. You get the, the lefty matchup with Deaton coming to the plate. One on and one out, right versus left, the matchup. Fancher looks in to 
Ramage for the sign. Now checks the runner and comes set from the stretch. Pitch driven hard into the hole on the right side for a base hit. Rogers up with it quickly, firing it into Landon Wallace in the infield, and it'll be first and second now for the big bat of John Robert Carnes. Yeah, just aggressive approach there. Deaton come up swinging at the first thing that he sees, and well, Whippets have uh, Carnes coming to the plate. Carnes knocked a solo home run out to right center field when he came up in the first. Ponatok likes to live with the, with the long ball, the extra base hit. Whippets kept them without a home run in game two. Carnes hit one here in game one as well, and the ball bounces in the dirt. Good block up there by Ramage, ball one. Jabari Farr on deck. There's plenty to worry about right now in that right-handed batter's box. Well, your conventional wisdom right here might be with the runners on first and second and the one out to put down a bunt, but you're not going to waste that on, on Carnes here. And the Whippets obviously know that. They're, not in, they're, not, they're playing back in the infield. Big cut, swinging strike, one and one. Yeah, Carnes just way over the top of that one. A little bit of breeze blowing more or less straight out right now. Check of the runner, pitch to the plate. That one left hanging up, and that's going to be into the night sky in left field. Another home run, and that brings in three, giving Ponatok the lead once again. Yeah, that time, uh, as you said, Fancher just left it up a little bit, and uh, that's what Carnes can uh, can do to you. And everybody, everybody here knew what was going to happen when when Carnes hit it. Nobody even turned to to look and. And uh, it's one of those just kind of a groan you hear come out through the, uh, through the Whippet fans. Carnes has now driven in four, and it's 5-3 Ponatok. Okay, then. Back to back. Long balls from Carnes. Bases empty, one out. Jabari Farr at the plate. He struck out to end the first. Fastball way outside. Did he bat right-handed the first time? I believe he did, yeah. Okay, I thought switch so. Switch hitter. I thought so. I figured that out late in game two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I had forgotten to write it down. One and oh. That one a little less off the plate, but still a couple of ball widths off the outside of that plate, two and oh. Far has got a good pedigree there. His uncle played ball for Itawamba and spent some time in the Mets organization in the minors. Good pedigree there from North Mississippi. Open stance, 2-0 pitch, and he hits it a fly, a, fly, a fly ball the other way, and on the run back to the wall is Will Carter on a tough play and a ball that was slicing and hit plenty long. I didn't think that ball was hit that well, but that's a long opposite field fly out there, two away. That was a great play there by Will Carter. He said he caught it while he was on his horse running it down. He was shaded toward left center on the left-handed hitter. Two out, and here's Jackson Williams. He pops one up, foul territory, right side. Riles looking for it, looking for it, and he overran it. It drops right by the on-deck area by the Whippet dugout. Yeah, I think everybody kind of lost it there. It looked like Ramage thought he was going to have it, and, and then, as you said, Riles overran it. I think they all kind of lost it in the night sky. Nothing one. Williams back in there. He was one for three in game two. Drove in a run. There's a breaking ball that hit straight down, spins foul up the third baseline. They hit that one off the inside of his foot. Yeah, I think it was foul before it ever left the home plate area. Yeah, he came up limping a little bit. 0-2 the count. Fancher working from the windup. Base is empty. 
Swing and a miss. Ball's dropped, but Ramage up with it, throws up to Wood at first to get out number three. Three runs on three hits. The swing of the bat from Carnes brought three in and has given Ponatalk a 5-3 lead in the middle of the third. When we come back, we're going to talk about Whippets softball and the Whippets uh, baseball team will bring Wood, Fancher, and Riles to the plate. 5-3 after two and a half. More Whippet baseball coming up after this. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountains, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Atala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Atala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. Where can you get good neighbor service and surprisingly great insurance rates? At State Farm. Hi, I'm Michelle Nicholson, your local State Farm agent. My team and I at 116 North Jackson on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko are your one-stop shop in Itala County and surrounding areas for the service you deserve and the price you want. So stop looking around. My team and I at Michelle Nicholson State Farm are ready to help. Call us 662-289-5537 for your surprisingly great rates today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Boswell Media Sports. Long ball flying out of here. Two home runs for Ponatok, one for Kosciuszko, and it's 5-3. Warriors lead the Whippets in this decisive game three. Winner goes home for the year. Excuse me, loser goes home for the year. Winner goes on to the third round. The other third round brackets uh, in the north is Moorville and West Lauderdale. Moorville, the a one seed out of Region 1. Yeah, Corinth is the two seed out of Region 1. Yeah, someone on the, on the stream yeah. just uh, let us know that. So if that's the case, then uh, it would be Kosciuszko would yeah. be home on Friday night. That's right. So we were yeah, – we were appreciate – e, I just checked the stream. E on you and me. Yeah, I checked the stream there, and someone commented that they were the two seed. So. Yeah. Yeah, so if uh, Kosciuszko wins, then um, they'd be home on Friday night on the road Saturday. Actually, I, I bet most of those games get moved to Thursday. There's about a 90% chance of rain in Mississippi on Friday. So okay. going to assume a lot of those ball games going to be changed on Friday. Ethan Wood leads it off. He hit the two-run homer. Let's go, one six. It gave the Whippets a 3-2 lead in the first. Lefty Garrett Pound throws one that's Looks a little bit up, a little bit away, but the umpire liked it, and it's a called strike. Ethan also going to be going down the road to Goodman next year, play some baseball and maybe a little football. 0-1 pitch. Tried to find the same spot, but just a, maybe a little bit outside. Evens the count, 1-1. One and one. Here's Pounds, 1-1. One, one. Fouled back. Breck the... Lady Whippets, the defending 4A fast pitch softball champions, made it to the third round. And um, we don't know yet who we're going to play. No, Ponatok and Caledonia, they're playing tonight. I haven't been able to find a score just yet. But Caledonia won game one in extra innings. Ponatok won game two on Saturday. So maybe there's some Ponatok fans at the softball game who could uh, put that on Twitter and a called strike three, and that was a borderline pitch as well, but caught looking as Wood for out number one in the third. Yeah, Ethan didn't like that one. It's it's a little, it's as you said, borderline is a good way to call that one, right on the edge there. But it's a big strikeout for Pound and the, uh, and the Warriors to get out one of the Whippets' best hitters there. Fourth K for Pound. As we work in the bottom of the third inning, left-handed hitter, Larson Fancher at the plate. He reached on a walk in the first pitch off the plate outside. That's the way Pound uh, started working Fancher in that first at bat. Really worked him outside and tried to come in on him. 1-0 pitch. Gets the called strike at the knees. Yeah. 
Wind up pitch, popped up, drifting foul, no play on it. Catcher takes his mask off and it lands over. Oh, it's, I thought it was going to get out of play, but it hit right in front of the backstop near the Whippet dugout. One and two. I do have an update for you on Pontotoc Caledonia. They did not, they got rained out. Okay. Tonight, so they're going to play tomorrow. Coach Wildman from uh, Pontotoc uh, listening in and uh, uh, watching the broadcast saying that rain got them. So they'll play game three tomorrow from the, the uh, they call it the softball field, the mini holla. I don't know what they call the softball field at Pontotoc. <laughs> One two pitch. Of course, it's it's uh, in another part of town. Yeah. Pitch is outside. <laughs> two and two to Fancher. Yeah, so Pontotoc Caledonia play tomorrow, and winner of that one will come. Oh, yeah, that one also depends on what happens. Here's the two two. Bouncer towards second. Play made as Cagle played it perfectly and throws to first, and they're two down. Nobody on. Parker Riles coming to the plate. Third inning presented by Frank Chevrolet. Breck, the Whippets uh, softball team coming off a two-game sweep of Itawamba AHS. They won game one here on Friday, 12-4. Then on the road Saturday, 3 to nothing. And after this pitch, uh, tell us a little about Anna Grace Whitehead's performance on Saturday as the pitch is down and in to Riles, ball one. Now, Whitehead goes uh, seven innings, strikes out nine and probably should have had a no-hitter in that ball game. I'll tell you more after Pound's pitch. Gets the called strike, nipped to the outside corner, one and one. Yeah, there was a uh, controversial call at first base where pretty much I think everybody in the stadium thought that the uh, runner was out, and uh, umpire thought differently. Other than that, just two base runners. And oh, and that's the worst outside pitch that's been called a strike tonight. That was awful. Yeah, there's not, much, there's, there's not much Riles can do with that. Once again, if yeah. he hits it, it's going in the duck out. I mean, and I'm not paid here to gripe about umpiring, but that was yeah. truly bad. A breaking yeah. ball up in the zone. He had to do something to it. Hacks it, spoils it out of play. Stays one and two. Yeah, there's just, you know, that much, as I said, Riles, no batter can do a lot with the pitch that, on that part of the plate, which is not even really on the plate. The wind and the pitch in the air, center field. Clayton tracks it, comes up about four steps and hauls it in. The whippets go down one, two, three in the third. Score remains Pontotoc five and Kosciuszko three. Stay with us at the top of the fourth coming up. It's... Bottom three in the order for the Warriors. Back with more Whippet Baseball after this from Breezy 101. Vehicle maintenance is often a hassle and occurs at the most inconvenient times. Central Tire Service enjoys vehicle maintenance and focuses on getting you back on the road from brakes, alignments, and exhaust to oil changes or new and used tires for your vehicle or ATV. Central Tire Service stocks all the major brands, Kenda, Toyo, Firestone, and Goodyear. They specialize in accessories for your truck or ATV and install rough country lift kits. Central Tire Service, across from Louvelle on Highway 35 in Kosciuszko. You bought lumber and you're ready to start digging post holes for that new fence, but not so fast. Do you know where your underground utilities are located? Central Electric Power Association urges you to call 811 for a free marking of underground electric lines and other utilities. Making the call before you dig can prevent a serious or fatal injury, plus it's the law in Mississippi. And please work safely around power lines. Central Electric Power Association, serving you since 1937. This institution is an equal opportunity provider and employer. Boswell Media Sports. Fourth inning getting underway from the Tala County Fairgrounds, and it's still Larson Fancher out there. He's been pretty efficient with his pitches. He's given up five runs, all of them earned, five hits. For Pontotoc, he faces Riley Cagle to start the inning. He puts one on the ground, going to the knees to get it. Sliding is done, and he makes a nice play. Wood had to stretch over to his right to haul it in. First base umpire wanted to call that Wood had come off the bag, but it's out number one, one pitch, one out in the fourth. Yeah, great play there by Jacob Nunn, not only to get to it and knock it down, to be able to jump up and 
throw across in time to get the out. And we got a, some kids throwing a ball. Made it down on the field. Time's called. So uh, while that uh, little pause takes place, we'll remind you that the fourth inning of Whippet Playoff Baseball is presented by Central Tire Service. Air raid siren come back out here again? Yep. <laughs> they, they haven't started the screeching and the yelping dog. I think they yet. Breaking ball located nicely inside corner. Called strike to Corbin Clayton. Clayton drew a walk his last time up. One thing we haven't mentioned, Philip, is that lights in the press box are working. Yes. No, no on, no off, no nothing. They're mm -hmm. here. No complaining. Yeah, we're here. We're not broadcasting in the dark like we did on Friday night. Fastball down and in. One ball, one strike to Clayton. Pitch on the way. Buried it low, and Fancher bends over and rubs some dirt on that right hand at the front of the pitcher's mound. Two one. He's going to line one into the gap. That would be extra bases. It rolls all the way to the track, off the base of the wall. And he pulls up at second. Took a look over there at third. But Clayton hit one a long way into the gap in left center. Base hit. A definition of a gapper right there. In fact, Will Carter got there about the same time as Kalen Powell did. So that tells you to just perfectly split the defense out in, in left center field. Raxton White side up, he's 0 for 1. Runner in scoring position for Pontotoc. They're trying to expand a two run lead in the top of the fourth. Breaking ball that escaped on him out in the left handed batter's box, 1 and 0. Five runs on six hits right now for Pontotoc. Whippets three runs on five hits. Errorless ball for both teams, and that's not something we've said in either games one or two. There's been a lot of errors in the field in this series. 1-0 pitch, fastball missed inside just by a smidge, 2-0. Uh, pitcher's meeting. Coach Duke. Go to do coming out of the dugout. We pause things in the top of the fourth inning. So was, to repeat something Breck uh, mentioned earlier, Whippet softball awaiting a game now rescheduled for tomorrow between Caledonia and Pontotoc uh, to see who their third round opponent will be, the Whippets. Got a first round by and then a two game sweep of Itawamba 12 4 and 3 0. Come on, 12. Come on, 12. Work it back. Let's go. Now back to action. 2 0 to count to Whiteside. Look back. Check of the runner from the stretch. Bounced into the hole. None won't get to it. They'll hold up. Clayton at third. Now it's runners at the corners and get to the top of the order and things are getting dicey here for the Whippets. Yeah, you had none playing over closer to the bag, kind of holding the runner on there. If he's playing, you know, normal back in his normal spot, he can probably knock it down. I'm not sure he's going to be able to throw him out, but at least it would have kept the runner over at second. But, yeah, that's just one of those unfortunate shifts. You know, good piece of hitting by yeah. – uh, was it – yeah, 10 out of 10 coaches are going to align the defense that way. Yeah. And you're going to – you move somebody away a little bit, you create a gap, and good job by White said, Whiteside to find the gap. Lefty crowding the plate here, Ty Clayton. He looks at the pitch low. Ball one. Clayton singled and scored in the first, got a stolen base in the process, and then grounded to second in the third. Let's see. We know that Pontotoc, they're not too aggressive on the base paths. But Whiteside does have some speed out there. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to get him a second. 
Pancher looks over there at Whiteside at first. Makes another look. Now the 1 0. Chopper to second. Could be a double play ball. Out at second. Throw at first. And the double play is successful. Four to six to three. Landed Wallace to nine to Wood. And the Whippets get out of the inning. No runs, two hits, no errors. And nobody left on base. Still 5 3, middle of the fourth. Stay with us. Top of the fourth coming up as Whippet playoff baseball continues. Baseball season is here, and that means fun for the entire family. Atala County Bank is proud to support Kosciuszko Baseball. We wish all the coaches and players a safe and exciting year and encourage fans to get out and cheer on your whippets. Atala County Bank, a branch of Holmes County Bank, 662-290-6963. Or visit atalabk.com. Supporting our community, it's what we do. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Reliant Physical Therapy always provides attentive, focused, and compassionate care for every patient to restore you back to your functional level. Physical therapist Haley Kewen and Adam Bell, along with assistants Veronica Wolfarth and Becca Shields Hayden, offer outpatient physical therapy and post op care for all ages and circumstances. Quality care and attentive time. When you need physical therapy, request Reliant Physical Therapy in Kosciuszko in the Megs Plaza, Highway 35 in Kosciuszko. Transforming lives physically and spiritually boswell media sports seven eight nine hitters due up for the whippets in the fourth they trail pontotoc five three at the italian county fairgrounds in this decisive game three second round for a state playoff series and breck i've circled with my pink highlighter that at bat from Clayton, the 4-6-3 double play turned beautifully by Landon Wallace, Jacob Nunn, and Ethan Wood to get out of the inning with runners first and third. Yeah, it was a, a great play there uh, by uh, Wallace. And uh, as you said, defense been been up to speed so far uh, tonight for, for both teams. There was one left on base. I think I said nobody. But just two stranded so far through four times at bat by Pontotoc. Whippets have left two on base. Will Carter at the plate now. He reaches out, lines one, shallow center. It's going to drop down in front of Clayton for a base hit. Just reaching out, touching it, getting it out there is Will Carter for his first base hit of this three-game series. Yeah, the aggressive approach there. Come up there swinging. And as you said, Carter, first base hit of the uh, of this postseason, or this series, I should say. Yeah. And Jacob Nine at the plate. He bunts up the first baseline, nicely done. Tag will be applied by Carnes <laughs> as uh, none went airborne <laughs> to, with that big guy waiting for him there. They move the runner, Carter, up to second. Yeah, none's kind of like, you know, like when you're getting attacked by a bear, you're supposed to make yourself look bigger. That's <laughs> all none can do with Carnes coming at him. Not saying Carnes is a bear or anything, but he's a, he's a big boy. <laughs> Carnes put a <laughs> Hard tag on uh, Whippet base runner in game two at Pontotoc. I forget who it was, but he, he was chastised. whacked somebody in the chest. Chastised a ball. little bit for it by the umpire, was he not? Yes, he was. Infield umpire got after him a little bit. Up and into Hayden Rogers. He looks at ball one. Runner at second, one out in the fourth. Fourth inning presented by Central Tire Service. Hayden singled off an 0-2 count. His first time up, shows Bunn here, pulls it back and takes ball two. Good eye there from Rogers. Corn's going to come in, talk to Pounds for a minute. Hayden Rogers is a young man who, you know, really getting his, he is getting his first starting experience this year, and he's been kind of a late bloomer. But boy, late in the regular season and through the playoffs, he's uh, really taking it up a notch. It swings at one that was coming in on the hands, two and one. It's cliched and it's overused, but, you know, it ain't how you start, it's how you finish. Well, sometimes the cliches are the are truth. Yep. <laughs> a 
Right-handed hitter waiting for the pitch from the lefty who has started this ball game and things still going here. He fakes the throw back to second, sends Carter back in. Carter's about three steps off the bag now, now shuffles out further. Should note about Gardner here at second. He is way, way over here to close to the bag at first in the shift. Pitch taken down, three and one. Oh, Kegel. It says Gardner on this one. So, yeah. Kegel, excuse me. Unless they've moved some. Yeah, that is Kegel at second. Oh. He played it second. Now, and they came, tried to come in on the hands again, but this time hit him in the midsection. So, free trip to first for Hayden Rogers. And the Whippets have two men on with one out in the fourth. So, tying runs on base. Yeah, Rogers kind of took that one off the, off the sternum. As. Williams will walk out and speak to Pound, and Deaton comes in for a little bit of a conversation with him. First hit batter for Garrett Pound. He's walked one, struck out four. Just hit the 70 pitch mark. I think both coaches would have to say they're pleased with how deep their starters have gone. Yeah, especially in, in a game three like this where you may be, as you said, Johnny Holstaff. Caleb Powell butts one third base side, scooped up in fair territory, and there's no play. The third baseman, Deaton, could have let that one roll about six more inches, it would have been fouled. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing there, Deaton. You Everybody's might, safe. You might want to let it roll a little bit further. It was close. I mean, it was right on that line, and it's one of those, you got to make a decision really quickly if you're Deaton. And uh, as you said, it was rolling right up the line, but a fantastic bunt by Kalen Powell, and we're going to have a, a meeting on the mound for the uh, Warriors. But, yeah, just a, couldn't ask for a better bunt right there. Time called, bottom of the fourth inning. The Whippets have the bases loaded. Carter led off the inning with a single to center field, blooped one into shallow center, then none sacrificed him to second. Rogers was hit by pitch. And then the beautiful bunt single up the third baseline from Kalen Powell loaded the bases. That's where we stand. The Whippets, let's see, we'll start it this way. The Warriors got two in the top of the first. The Whippets answered in the bottom of the frame with three. And the difference in the ball game right now, the three-run top of the third. Three-run homer by John Robert Carnes. He has hit two out of the park tonight. Here's Connor Wallace. I think you like having him at the plate with the bases loaded and one out in the fourth. Crowd gets sitting on the edge of their seats now, and he lines one into left field for a single. That will score Carter, and everybody else holds up there as the throw comes in to the catcher. Whippets have narrowed the gap, 5-4. Yeah, as, as you said, you mentioned it about you wanting Connor Wallace, you're one of your senior leaders there, and uh, sort of the – big attitude coming to the plate like he wants to be in this kind of situation. Sometimes, you know, you, you have batters that would rather not have the pressure on him. Wallace, not one of those guys. He wants to be there. He wants to be the one. You know what? Put all the pressure in. Let me get a hit. And he comes through right there. Here's Ty Ramage. One for two with a double. Gets the high called strike. That one, that one up in the zone a, a little bit. It wasn't and egregious, but I thought it was up a little bit. Wallace at first, Powell at second, Rogers at third, pitch coming. That went up at chin level, one and one. Uh, going back to Ramage's at bat there in the first inning, he went the, got an 0 for two hole and then sent one down in the in as far in the corner of the ballpark as it could go. Lefty comes set. Side arms it outside, two balls and a strike, advantage Ramage. That one sailed a little bit outside on pound. That may be a sign of some fatigue. Yeah, he didn't look comfortable when he uh, released that one. You can kind of see it on, on the face there. He might probably knew when he left his hand. Outfield playing deep, but straight away. Foul straight down off the left foot. Owie for 
Ty Ramage, he'll get a moment to walk it off. Two and two. Yeah, we came in. Don't sting a little bit. But if anybody can stand being uh, nicked up, you would think your catcher could take it better than anybody yeah. else. Because that's it is rough back there behind the plate. That's nah, just Tuesday for him. You know. Note here: Will, Will Carter taking some warm-up tosses behind the whip it dugout. Left versus right, two-two pitch. Hit lined right to the second baseman, and they'll double off Powell at second, and Ponatok escapes. It keeps the lead. One, uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, you, you think right there, that was, uh, look off the bat like it was going to indeed get through the infield. So, yeah, you can't fault Powell too much right there for cheating off the bag. But, yeah, just, uh, you know, heads up play there by uh, Clayton at shortstop. Hit right on the screws, but the double play. One run, three hits, no errors, two left on base. And we played four complete. Kosciuszko trails 5-4 in this game three. Back with the top of the fifth as Whippet playoff baseball continues. Baseball season is here, and that means fun for the entire family. Atala County Bank is proud to support Kosciuszko Baseball. We wish all the coaches and players a safe and exciting year and encourage fans to get out and cheer on your Whippets. Atala County Bank, a branch of Holmes County Bank, 662-290-6963. Or visit atalabk.com. Supporting our community, it's what we do. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Reliant Physical Therapy always provides attentive, focused, and compassionate care for every patient to restore you back to your functional level. Physical therapist Haley Kewen and Adam Bell, along with assistants Veronica Wolfarth and Becca Shields Hayden, offer outpatient physical therapy and post-op care for all ages and circumstances. Quality care and attentive time. When you need physical therapy, request Reliant Physical Therapy in Kosciuszko in the Megs Plaza, Highway 35 in Kosciuszko. Transforming lives physically and spiritually boswell media sports top of the fifth about to start larson fancher returns to the hill four runs on eight hits for kosciuszko five run on five runs on seven hits for pontotoc whip it's had the bases loaded with one out Got one run across, but then line shot right to the shortstop, created the double play. So both teams got out of a jam with a double play. Pitch outside to the two-hitter, Walt Gardner, who's one for two. <coughs> Fancher winds, fires it in, bounces outside 2-0. and oh. Yeah, we mentioned Carter throwing some warm-up tosses behind the, the dugout earlier. They were in between innings. He's back in in left field, so might have an idea of where the Whippets may be headed next. Yeah, this is not an easy inning as the pitch spoiled fouled out a play right side two and one. Yeah, you got the meat of the order coming up here for Fancher, so. Yeah, it will be Gardner, Deaton, and then Carnes. Carnes. Might have certainly heard made his presence felt tonight. Might have heard of him. Two and one. Leaves it up. That was a called strike about uh, an inning and a half ago. And you can see the frustration on Fancher. He wanted that called strike. He kind of stares in at the home plate umpire. Yeah, he's going to kind of take a second there to take his glove off and kind of calm down behind the, the rubber. Three one. Swing and a miss. Three and two. I'm not sure if he got a hold of that or if it just yeah. bounced, bounced off of Ramage's glove. I thought it bounced off the mitt and went back. Yeah. But uh, either way, three and two. Full count to Gardner. Fancher with a three-two. Oh, they got got a pitch got away from him and hit him in the shoulder. Gardner reaches officially hit by a pitch. Leadoff man on in the fifth, fifth inning presented by the Itala County Bank. Yeah, as you said, that one just kind of got away from him. And Coach McBride going to come in, probably going to have that pitch and change. First hit batter 
It was a walk. Three strikeouts. Coach McBride coming out. That usually means the pitching change. As some of the infield corner infielders come in and the catcher joining Coach Cole McBride, and he calls for Carter. Calls for Carter. So we'll take a pitching change break and a nice uh, round of applause for Larson Fancher, who gave a nice four innings plus of work in a game three. And senior Will Carter will get the ball. We'll come back after this as the Whippet Playoff Baseball continues. From the classroom to the athletic playing field, Holmes Community College provides a world of opportunities. A first-class education, affordable tuition, and accessible locations make Holmes your best choice to further your higher education. Holmes Community College is consistently recognized as one of the best community colleges in the state of Mississippi. Let Holmes Community College fill your needs by providing classes for academic transfer, learning a new trade, or improving your skills through a workforce development department. For more information, log on to the school's website at holmescc.edu or calling 1-800-HOLMES-4. Boswell Media Sports. Pitching change coming up for the Whippets. In the top of the fifth, Will Carter comes in from left field. Ethan Wood goes into left field, and Larson Fancher moves over to first. Here's the book on Will Carter coming into this game. This is appearance number 13. 16 and a third innings, record 0-2 officially on the season, has given up 18 hits in 16-plus innings, 17 runs, all earned, struck out 21, walked 11, his ERA 7.29. Yeah, and you want to mention about Larson Fancher, you know, uh, had a great outing there and uh, a good uh, applause from the uh, from the crowd. The, the Whippet fans know what Larson Fancher's been through. Yes. Here, and we haven't mentioned it. There's a sign out in the outfield dedicated to his mother, who was a former public servant here, circuit, yep, clerk, circuit pa clerck. passed away back in um, in September or back in the fall. Yeah, yeah back and in 2021. Of yeah, of course. And we said Fancher been dealing with the um, the injury for the season. So a uh, big round of applause there. Well-deserved round of applause for Fancher yeah. there when he came out of the ball game. So the junior Fancher over at first. Riles at third, Fancher at first. None at short. Landon Wallace on the infield. Pitch from Carter outside. Gets away off the mitt. Throw up quickly from Ramage, but then it gets under the glove of none, and moving ahead to third is Walt Gardner, and all of a sudden, great opportunity presents itself for Ponotok in the top of the fifth with nobody out. Yeah, now that that's happening, I wouldn't be surprised if you Deaton tries to lay a bunt down the first baseline right here. So first error of the evening. I think you've got to score that pass ball, then also an error on the, on the throw. 1-0 the count to Deaton. Pitch way outside off the plate, 2-0. Carter came in in the jam on, uh, in the game on Friday night as well. He came in in relief of Parker Riles. The runner at third, he works from the stretch, throws a fastball that's downstairs. Yeah, Carter pitched two innings through 25 pitches, got a couple of strikeouts and a walk, but didn't give up any hits. He's behind 3-0 and now on the count. And the pitch is high. Walked him on four pitches. The hit batsman by Fancher, then the walk by Carter. Combine that with a pass ball and an error, and the Whippets uh, have their backs against the wall here in the fifth. And Carnes is coming to the plate. No sign yet that the Whippets want to – not sure you really want to load the bases with nobody out, but – do you have a different pitcher yeah. in the ball game? He might just not get anything I mean, to hit. Yeah, this may be the uh, intentional, unintentional, or the unintentional. Anyway, they may pitch carefully around him. <laughs> Comes inside, and he fouls it back. That was one to hit, I think, for Carnes. Just jammed him a little bit. Carnes hit a solo home run in the first. And a three-run homer in the third. That's why we're talking about pitching carefully or even the possibility of putting him on. 
0-1 though, Carter ahead. Comes set, little 53 move, fakes to third and then to first. Carter's another one of those guys that you, you know got a little bit of attitude. He's like, you know, I can get this guy out. You know, don't put him on. You, know, you kind of want to challenge the, the, the big guy here. Carter from the stretch. Here's the pitch. Bounce, chopped foul. Coach Parker, two for two on putting his hands out there yeah. and making them and making some catches at the back side he, of the dugout. He played center field. Him and his seven brothers. <laughs> so here's some, he had. here's Owen two. Don't leave anything up hanging up there. I'm just gonna set Gotta up locate. That, that one's was. in the dirt. Good job blocking it up off his shoulder there. The chest protector. Good job by Ramage. Yeah, he set up outside on that one and got away from Carter just a little bit. Runners first and third. One ball, two strikes. John Robert Carnes. Carter's pitch. Yeah. Down and away. And it was a check swing. And the only appeal up the first base side is say he didn't go around. I think that was the right call, yeah, two and I two. I don't think he went. And off the wild pitch, the runner at first, Deaton, moves up to second. But yeah, you can definitely see Whippet's uh, strategy here of well, he got the two on him. Now just work yeah. it outside. <laughs> see yeah. if he chases it. See if he'll chase. And now you got first base open, so. And that one goes the other way, deep right field to the scoreboard. And that one's a three-run home run. Over the scoreboard. Over the scoreboard. I've never seen and one hit over the scoreboard. And it is eight to four. Yeah, and I think Carter did what he wanted to do. It was outside, and maybe, yeah. maybe left up yeah. just a little bit. Just the strength. He went out after that <laughs> ball. It was not one that he put right in his wheelhouse. Yeah. That's just that's what you call muscling one yeah. out of here. Yeah. As I said, I don't think I don't think Carter anyone thought it was a bad pitch. It just he just got a lot of upper body strength, and still nobody out in the inning. Bases cleared with a three-run home run, third of the night, seven RBI for Carnes, and it's 8-4 Warriors in the fifth. Jabari Farr bats from the left side. He swings at a pitch that was up and away and knocks it foul out of play. Farr gave one a, a long ride. His last at bat that uh, Carter was on the mound. He had a track down in left field. It was a long run for him. But he was able to get a barrel into it. That one's hit. Oh. Up the line, under the glove of Fancher, toward the corner, but over to get it quickly as Rogers to hold far to a single. Yeah, that one just didn't take a hop. You thought he might uh, hop a little bit. I think that's what Fancher was thinking as well, but ground played it dead a little bit. Didn't take too big of a hop at, at first. Fancher was in position. Jackson Williams with a runner at first, nobody out. Fifth man to the plate in the fifth for Ponotok as they've expanded the lead. He shows bunt, misses, fastball down the middle, strike one. The inning started with a hit by pitch on Gardner, and that was the last batter that Larson Fancher faced. He gets charged with that run. Give you the final book on him in just a second. Called strike, good fastball down the middle, 0 and 2. Deaton walked when Carter came in. Carter walked Deaton. Got to second on a wild pitch. O2. Yeah. Down and away. One ball, two strikes. And Carnes came up, fell behind 0 2, and then Muscled a 2-2 pitch out over the scoreboard in right center field. And Farr hit a single. 
Pitch inside, close pitch, two and two. Yeah, Coach Dew and Coach McBride not, not happy with the call there. Three runs across so far on the home run. Carter's 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Reliant Therapy strikeout. First one of the night for Carter, and that's out number one in the fifth. Yeah. Needless to say there, but a huge out for uh, the Whippets and a huge out for Carter. Riley Cagle's 0 for 2. He comes up with runner at first base. One out in the fifth inning. Fifth inning presented by the Itala County Bank. Carter side one bunted up third base side and Riles can't scoot, scoop it up. It's going to roll and then roll foul. But did he touch it is the question. And the home plate umpire says that it's going to be a single that, uh, and yeah, it went foul in front of the bag at third. The question is, did Riles touch it? Yeah, uh, no, they both played it and let it roll and Carter and Riles both uh, I didn't see anyone touch yeah, it. Yeah, no. I didn't. I can't say I saw anybody touch it. No. My view is blocked here with the, the the window in front of us. Now all three umpires are going to consult yeah, I mean, about. I mean, the guy over on the right side of the infield is not going to be a lot of help unless he says, "Oh yeah, I saw. I saw Riles touch it." I think that should be a foul ball. And it looks like. Uh, it looks like. The Whippets are going to get the break there on the and it looks like it's going to be a foul ball. So and, uh, Kegel yeah, back 0-1. Yeah, I think that's the right call. I said from what I saw, yeah. I didn't see anybody touch it. Oh no, they called it fair ball. Now Coach Cole McBride coming out. He wants an explanation. And Coach McBride's temper is really flaring here. He is unhappy. He's talking to the crew chief now. What happened was Cagle bunted it up the third base line. It stayed on the grass. Riles came up to make a play on it. It went under his glove. I didn't see a sign that he touched it, and then it rolled foul about – maybe four feet in front of the third base bag, and Coach McBride is really pleading his case with the two umpires. It looks like he's not going to prevail. And it looks like he just got tossed from the game. Is that what happened, or is he, is he hey, warned? I don't think he just got a warning. Okay. And so may, I may have just confined him to the dugout. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't, okay. I don't think he got tossed, but it's going to be scored a bunt single. Far up at second. Riley Cagle at first. And the Pontotoc fans loving every minute of it. The Whippets misery here in the top of the fifth. Three runs across, one out. And a botched call on a bunt, bunted ball up the third baseline. Yeah, that's all they did. McBride can confine to the dugout. So maybe the Whippets can find a double play ball as they did back in the fourth to end the threat. Batters Corbin Clayton, he bunts. And Ramage wanted to come up as uh, runner, the uh, uh, Man at second took off for third and successful steal for far. He gets down to third. If I can get the words out of my mouth. Yeah, runners on the corners. Yeah, go tall. Now they're going to have a some sort of conference with maybe an admin. I don't know what's going on. Umpires coming to the side. Yeah, time call, top of the fifth inning. And umpiring crew wants uh, wants athletic director Macy Wilbanks to handle something. So we're watching up the 
a line to see exactly what that is. I think something with a student deck. Wants her to be the monitor down by the student deck, maybe. A lot to battle through here in the top of the fifth. Will Carter ready to throw the yeah, ball? Yeah, exactly. Carter's just like, just let me throw the ball. His arms out there. He's standing out there getting cold. Runners at the corners. 0-1 the to count to Corbin Clayton. Clayton doubled his last time up. Doubled into the gap at left center. Hit one all the way to the wall. Throw is to first. Diving back in is Cagle. Owen won the count from the stretch. Runner at first taken off. Ramage throws, and they've got him out. Cagle caught stealing. Runner at third. Far stays put, and that's a big out to get. Great throw from Ty Ramage. Cagle eliminated two to four. I don't think Angel Hernandez would have uh, called that kid safe at second. <laughs> one and one the count to Clayton. I mean, he was out. It was a good throw. Time. Time called. Clayton, a right-handed hitter. Carter, a right-handed pitcher. Outfield playing straight away. He lines one over the glove of Fancher at first. That will drive in far with an RBI single, and it's 9-4. to four. Yeah, just a good piece of hitting there. I thought I thought Fancher might be able to get a glove on it, but just a little too far out of his uh, out of his reach there. But yeah, just a good good little piece of hitting. Hey, let's go, Will. Brings up the nine hitter Braxton Whiteside. Runner at first, two out. Garner's pitch, check swing, strike. Zero and one. Four runs across in the top of the fifth. And that pitch sailed on Carter up and in, ball one. A maroon white chant breaking out from the student deck. First four hitters in the inning have reached and they've all scored for Pontotoc. Popped up foul territory right side toward the dugout, but it won't be playable for, oh, it, Last second could have been playable for Fancher, but he overran it a little bit, and he gets an earful from the Warrior dugout. Yeah, it was going to be a tough play to make because it was going to be right along the front of that Warrior dugout. So, I mean, you're, you're going to have to have some kind of concentration to haul that one in when you're, when you're running and you got guys in your ear right there. You got a time. Now one ball, two strikes. Coach Wesley Dew comes out, talk to the home plate umpire. Think about that, maybe about that last sequence there on the foul ball. Yeah, maybe talking about some interference or something. Now he wants. I think it might be just a. Yeah, it might, might just be a warning. Now the uh, home plate, the first base umpire, are going to talk. As we did see the the first base coach for Pontotoc after that play did tell his guys, you know, kind of back up a little bit. So yeah. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, so he kind of he kind of told him, uh, you know, kind of back up. <laughs> no, I don't yeah. think it was anything egregious, you know. It's just no, just, no, there was nothing. Just, uh, you know, nobody threw anything at him or just, you know, just, just anything like that. Just, it's it's just a know, tough play. Opponents being opponents, right? That's right. They're not gonna give it, you. You can't expect yeah. a break. <laughs> they're for not gonna, sure. They're gonna give it to you easy, right in front of their dugout. So yeah. Yeah. one and two runner taken off. Pitch to the plate. Called strike three, and that ends the inning. Whiteside goes down looking on a borderline pitch, but it's four runs across the plate, four runs on four hits. There was an error and a runner stranded. So, Pontotoc leads 9-4, middle of the fifth. The Whippets will bring up four, five, and six, Wood, Fancher, and Riles as Whippet playoff baseball continues. 
When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem, you need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. Hi, this is Stephen Franks of Frank Chevrolet Buick GMC here in Kosciuszko. I'm usually talking about the unlimited supply of vehicles, but thanks to the great business that we've been doing, we're very limited. But keep shopping us at frankchevy.com, and if we don't have what you want, we can go get it. Remember, shop us online at frankchevy.com or 662-289-4611 or come see us on Highway 35 North here in Kosciuszko. Make your driving dreams come true. Boswell Media Sports. Whippets have an uphill climb in their last three times at bat. They've got nine outs to play with, and they've got to make up a five-run deficit. They trail nine to four going to the bottom of the fifth, and Garrett Pound is back for more. He has pitched four innings, struck out, four, and he's surrendered uh, four earned runs, given up eight hits. A big top of the inning for the Warriors. Oh, they, well, if, I was going to say, if, if this series has told us anything, it's that expect, the, expect anything to happen because the Whippets got up seven to nothing in the uh, first inning of game one, ended up losing that game ten to seven. So yeah. nothing is out of reach for either squad here. But given where we are in the ball game, I, the Whippets have got to get something on the scoreboard in this bottom of the fifth. And somebody who can do something about that is at the plate. That's Ethan Wood. And he is an excuse me swing foul into the net. Yeah, he knew it too. He kind of shook his head. Wood homered to left center in the first. Three run blast. Gave the Whippets the lead in the bottom of the first. Then he struck out looking his last time up. Pitches down in the dirt. Ball one. One ball, one strike. Umpire took that one off the off the mask. Oh, it was off the mask. Okay, yeah. I looked. Yeah, I thought it was low. I saw it at his feet. It bounced, <laughs> it bounced, bounced off, his it off his mask. Pound rocks. Fires it in there. And off the end of the bat, foul into the net. One and two. You should note that uh, Coach McBride still confined to the dugout. You got Coach Wesley do as your third base coach. Good idea. Lefty, one, two pitch off the end of the bat, line to right field and going back on it is Gardner making the catch. So he puts up the glove and Ethan Wood retired. Out number one in the fifth, fifth inning presented by the Itala County Bank. Yeah, just had a good shade on him right there. Ethan had to reach out and try to hit that one. Bring up. Larson to Fancher. Fancher officially 0 for 1. Drew a walk in the first. Grounded to second in the third. Apparently it's a fastball that's a little above the strike zone, ball one. Yeah, about eye level. One-0 pitch, pitch down in the zone, swinging over the top of it, swinging strike one. Yeah. Fancher, big cut there from Fancher. Got a couple of whippers up throwing in the behind the dugout. That one's line, no backhand, successful there at second base into right center field and a base hit for Fancher in the fifth. The whippers have a base runner, got to pass the bat back. Yeah, not not trying to do too much there was Fancher. As you said, just a single through the through the gap right there at second. Parker Ryle stepping in. Yeah. Good chase there by Cagle, but he was about a foot short of the backhand, about a step away from it. And Parker Riles will try to move Fancher around. Jacob Nunn throwing some warm-up tosses out here behind the whip of dugout.
Check of the runner, lefty to the plate, side arms, and it scoots away from Williams up the side, and that's an easy trip to second for Fancher. Now the Whippets have the runner in scoring position. Now Williams had some words for the Whippet dugout. Oh, they're still having William, some words for the I, I Whippet will dugout. Notice Williams is, uh, is a good catcher. He's got got a good arm, plays well back behind the plate, but he wears his emotions on his sleeve. I've seen that in all three games. Uh, he, you do not have to wonder what he's thinking. He's going to let somebody know. 1-0 and oh, came way inside on him. Getting out of the way of it was Riles, and it's two balls, no strikes. Seeing this over here in the on-deck circle, you got Ethan Wood kind of doing some coaching uh, to Will Carter. He was out there kind of giving some tips. Pitch down and in, 3-0. and oh. Williams calls time, wants to talk to Pound. Four runs on nine hits right now for the home team. Nine runs, 11 hits for the visitors. Winner of this game moves on to the third round of the playoffs to face Corinth. Breaking ball, missed low on a four-pitch walk. First and second now as Parker Riles gets a free trip to first. Yeah, if you're pound there, it's really, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt you if you throw that pitch there because now you, got, That's right. you had first base open. So, you know, obviously you want to get the out, but if you're Pontoc, now you got the force play. Will Carter singled his last time up and scored. So the Whippets got a single run then and had the bases loaded, but a double play ended the threat. Pitch down and away. That one. Not located well by Pound. And Pound showing a little signs of fatigue there, and he kind of shook his arm out like that after the after the pitch. So, I mean, he's I got him at 88 pitches here on the game tracker. Two men on, one out, and then he comes in and hits Carter in the shoulder, and it's bases loaded with one out. Hit maybe Carter down. Maybe we've gotten him down around the side. Well, I yeah, I got him in the he ribs. Kind of holding his ribs there. There is somebody throwing down I beyond. I couldn't that. tell if it was a kid or a player. Oh, it's it's no, it's a player. Yeah, there's some 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 black jerseys there that are throwing. Cooper Black gonna come in to run for Carter. He's gonna Carter gonna limp off there. He took one, took a shot. The inning started with a line out to right by Wood. Fancher singled past the second baseman. And Riles walked on four pitches. And Carter got hit with the second pitch he saw from Pound as all the infielders are in talking about things with Coach. Looks like we're going to see a pitching change with one out in the bottom of the fifth inning. No. No? Not yet. Yep, he's. that's right. He's staying with him. You and I are both fooled on that one. Yeah, well, you know, it's head coach that comes out. You know, you usually think when the head coach comes out, it's a, a pitch and change, as you mentioned earlier in the ball game. But, but yeah, he's – All right, yeah, so we're not going anywhere. We're going back to action, a whip it at every base with one out. He does show that he's bringing a, a righty at some point. Jacob Nunn with a strikeout and a sacrifice. But, again, for the series, he is four for seven. Maybe, maybe he's the yeah, guy you want. A, he's showing bunt. Yeah. The corner infielders pinch in, pulls it back, pitch outside, ball one. Crowd starting to turn it up a notch. Folks getting on the edge of their seats again. The Whippets have a golden opportunity to get back in this ball game in the bottom of the fifth. Again, showing bunt, pulling it back, taking it at the knees for a strike. Looked a little low. Yeah, Jacob Dunn is one of those batters subject to laid out a bunt. Doesn't matter what the situation is. He's fast, and, and he can lay one down first base. He can do just about anything. Pounds one, one pitch. Oh, nearly hit him. Came up in two and one. And it's something we say all the time about Dunn. 
squirrely, an- annoying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's just one of those players. He's that's just like kind of small. He, he moves quick. His hands are quick. He's just there. He can get into your head really quickly. Two wide. Swinging strike two. Yeah, he swung over the top of that one. But big pitch there by Pound to come right after him. Corner infielders come back now. They're on the dirt. Two strikes on the hitter. Middle infield playing double double play depth. More just in a little bit. Here's a 2-2. And he caught a piece Foul of Foul tip caught by the catcher, and none is retired for out number two. Uh, but, yeah, he caught a piece of it, but Williams, good job there. Uh, keeping that in his glove. And up to Hayden Rogers here to try to extend the inning. Big out to get, but a big moment. Hayden Rogers, smile on his face as he comes to the batter's box. We're going to have a pinch runner for, for Fancher. I think that's is that Benny, is that Powell? Yeah, Benny Powell. Benny Powell, brother of Kalen Powell. So they're going to make that note. Just want maybe a little bit more speed over there at, yeah. at third base. If you want to, and particularly it at least creates the – Thought in Ponatok's head that, okay, are they going to try squeeze? Suicide squeeze play there. What are you going to do? Rogers yeah. attempted to do it last at bat, and he took one off the chest. Base is loaded, two out, bottom of the fifth. Wibbit's trying to chip away at a five-run deficit. Here's the pitch. Down and away, ball one. Penny Powell at third, Parker Riles at second. Cooper Black at first. That one came inside, way inside, fastball, 2-0. and oh. Definite fatigue as Pound is just trying to battle through this inning and hope he can get Rodgers to get himself out. 2-0. Got him to swing over the top of it. 2-1. and one. Yeah, that time Pound did what he had to do. Come back and just get trying to get Rodgers to chase one. It's like he took a little something off that pitch and got him to swing swing out ahead of it. 2-1. and one. Fouled back. Fastball that was letter high. That was a pitch to hit. Now 2-2. Two and two. Rodgers a strike away from Getting out of the jam, and the Whippets are just one base hit away from getting back in the middle of this ball game. Kick and delivery. Hit a long way. Left fielder going back. Get out of here. Grand slam for Hayden Rogers. He is skipping around the bases. And boy, did the Whippets get back into this one. Uh, they're having to kind of gather some uh, some emotion back in. Woo! Some emotion. Cole McBride coming out a little bit of the dugout. And uh, the home plate, uh, or the coach, is going to appeal to the home plate umpire. I think the only issue might be there that, I don't know. Hayden Rogers sent one over the left field wall for a grand slam. It's 9-8. The officials are talking to each other after Coach Daddy come at, comes out of the dugout. They're meeting over by the third base side. Coach Wesley Dew trying to get within earshot. So the umpire's conversation is over. Powell scored. Benny Powell scored on the homer. Ryle scored on the homer. Only thing I can think of is that yeah. Rogers' helmet came off coming around the bag. Now, if it's if it's taken off, I'm not 100% sure of the the rule. But Rogers was, you know, he was just excited, and I think it may have just fallen off. So now they want now he wants to talk to the the umpire back behind first. 
And I'm still catching my breath after that home run to left field, and it was majestic. Yeah, and it was on a was a two two pitch, and yes, yeah. I'm not sure what they're like. I said that's the only thing I can think of is that like, uh, is the helmet coming off? But yeah, I don't. And there was some uh, words from uh, Jackson Williams, the Pontotoc catcher, and some of the whippets who were coming out of the dugout to greet to greet uh, Hayden Rogers as he came around third after hitting the biggest home run of his life. Whippet fans are up on their feet cheering and giving it to the, the umpiring crew. And the Pontotoc coach not satisfied with what he's hearing. We have not had a ruling. It looks like he's still pleading his case in foul territory on the first base side. I think that's Lee Burrell back there at uh, first base umpire. Yeah, I still, we're not sure that's the only thing it could be. I mean, I'm, there's been no appeal. Like, like, you would think if it was he missed a bag. Yeah, it's a home run. They're going to call it a home run. Yep, home run, the signal. So the appeal's over. Well, not quite yet. And he wants it written, and the Pontotoc coach wants it written as a protest. Is that what? Yeah. Yeah, that's he, what he just said. I think I was reading yeah. his lips. Yeah, he said he's. That's. If I remember correctly, you, you, you mentioned that you foul. You're playing the rest of the game under protest, I believe. Yeah, now they're coming to talk to the crew chief, and I think that's a signal that's, that's put in the notebook. Uh, in the major leagues, the. Umpire comes out and makes a big P with us like he's drawing it in the air with his finger. There's nobody to hear in the press box who's official. So that doesn't uh, happen at this level, but he's made it a note in his notebook. And the bases are clean with two out thanks to the grand slam home run from Hayden Rogers. He got it out of here toward that thin crescent moon in left field. Yeah, no, he just took one deep. And a 2-2 pitch, turned it out back to the top of the order. The inning continues. Kalen Powell at the plate. The long, long inning. Hey, let's go, KP. Continues. Kalen Powell, two for three. Pitch way outside, ball one. Warriors nine, Whippets eight in the fifth. How about that? Barry's a fastball, 2-0. And, and coach coming out of the dugout, I think he's seen enough. Calls to the pitcher. Comes out to check on his pitcher, and I think we're going to see the pitching. In fact, this has to be a pitching change because it's the second time he's come out. That'll be it for Pound. We'll take a break. Tell you about the pitching change and whatever defensive changes take place when we come back. Whippets have hit a grand slam in the bottom of the fourth of the fifth, and it's now 9-8. The Whippets trail by just one. From the classroom to the athletic playing field, Holmes Community College provides a world of opportunities. A first-class education, affordable tuition, and accessible locations make Holmes your best choice to further your higher education. Holmes Community College is consistently recognized as one of the best community colleges in the state of Mississippi. Let Holmes Community College fill your needs by providing classes for academic transfer, learning a new trade, or improving your skills through a workforce development department. For more information, log on to the school's website at holmescc.edu or calling 1-800-HOLMES-4. Boswell Media Sports. Bonatok makes a pitching change in the bottom of the fifth with two out. They bring in Corbin Clayton. Corbin Clayton from short. And this is his first appearance on the mound in this series. Ty Clayton is pitched, but uh, first time we've seen right-hander Corbin Clayton. He's the shortstop, so we'll see who they put at short. Looks like they brought in Jab Jab uh, Jabari Farr to play in right, and they may be moving Gardner over to short. 
but we have not seen everybody uh, move around yet. Looks like uh, Gardner coming in from right. He may be at second. Anyway, this is all just some speculation at the moment because everybody's just sort of loosening up around here. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. The Whippets have hit a grand slam. Senior right fielder Hayden Rogers took one way out of here with the bases loaded and two out. Then, then Kalen Powell got ahead in the count 2-0 and oh, and the pitching change was made. Karn stays at first. Deaton stays at third. Yes, Gardner in from right to second base. And Cagle moves to short and far in and right. So Kalen Powell up. Clayton inherits a 2-0 count. Just trying to get one out, get out of this inning. Righty leaves a fastball up and away, and now it's 3-0. Philip Palmer and Breck and Riley with you. 3-0 pitch. Pitch was way off the plate, but he gets the called strike. That one inside, and he called. That one a little more inside. That still, I think, was ball four, but it gets called strike two. Powell had tossed the bat heading up to first. Three and two, thanks to two very generous called strikes. Pitch on the way, he reaches out, spoils it, sends it out of play right side. Looks like a home plate umpire wants to help the pitcher here. Three and two. That one way outside. And Powell on base with a walk, so the whip it. Ed bat continues, eighth man up is Connor Wallace. Connor two for three. Scored a run and drove in a run. Clayton comes set, working from the stretch for the first time. Pitches up and cocking his arm for the throw over to first was Williams, but he held on to yeah, it. Yeah, Powell got a big secondary lead right there. And he's got some speed. And he might be thinking second base here soon. And he fakes it there. And he fakes it there, yeah. 2 and 0. Bonatok 9, Kosciuszko 8. Tying run at first. Bottom of the fifth. Pitch outside. 3-0. and oh. Yeah, Clayton's trying to figure out, you know, where that one was. It didn't miss <laughs> by much, but it's been a strike. Some points tonight that has been a strike, so it can be a little frustrating for some of these pitchers that are getting the calls. Clayton sails it, four-pitch walk to Connor Wallace. First and second with two out. Well, you usually talk about chipping away at a lead, and Whippets, in a way, did that, but in a way, they just got it with one big swing. Yeah, and it's been the, the guy that we said had the, the, the number nine hitter in the lineup who's started, it ain't how you start, it's how you finish, right? We said it earlier in the broadcast, and we're still just in the bottom of the fifth. Jackson out to the mound to talk to young Corbin Clayton. Ty Ramage, the hitter. Ty doubled in a run in the first, lined out to right, and lined into a double play in the fourth. He's the ninth man up in the inning. What an inning it has been. Clayton checks Powell at second. Pitch outside, and there's the Sort of emotions on the sleeve there from Jackson Williams. He wants another timeout. He held his hands out saying, like, hey, what are you throwing? Yeah, yeah he's a little frustrated with his pitcher there, not on the same page. He did that a good bit in game two. It's, it's uh, Eli Dew and I were down at ground level, and it's sometimes a lot easier to see that 
pitcher-catcher interaction at ground level than it is up here in the press box. But the count's 1-0 to Ramage, two men off. Pitch to the plate. Guns a fastball in right down Main Street, called strike. Yeah, Ramage is going to be taken all the way there. Clayton's been having five balls in a row out of the zone. Put it away and down, two and one. We started the game at 7.05. We were two minutes, seven, two hours, seven minutes in, just the bottom of the fourth. Thought we'd have a high scoring game. That's what we've got, two, one. Left it up, about shoulder high, three and one. If Ramage can reach, Ethan Woods up next. Ponatok in trouble. Clayton shaking off a couple of signs and Ramage wants time now. Coach Wesley Dew down at third, arguing a call earlier. Top of the inning, Coach Cole McBride was confined to the dugout. Confined to quarters. It was the military term there. <laughs> Here's the 3 1. Gets a call strike. Put it right down the middle. 3 and 1. 3 and 2 now, excuse me. Runner's going to be scooting. Yep. On the pitch here. Full count. Two outs. Clayton at the belt. Swing and a miss. Struck him out to end the inning. Four runs. On just two hits, there were no errors. Two men left on base. The Whippets have stranded six, but they have made it a brand new ball game, answering the four runs it scored in the top of the inning. Nine to eight, the score. Will Carter back out to pitch. We'll tell you about the top of the sixth after we take this break on Breezy 101. Blue Shots are now at Premier Medical Clinic in Kosciuszko and Carthage and Trace Urgent Care. An annual seasonal flu vaccine is the best way to reduce the chances that you'll get the seasonal flu and spread it to others. When more people get vaccinated against the flu, less flu can spread through our community. Protect yourself and your family from the flu. No appointment is needed for flu shots. Just walk in and they will see you shortly. Premier Medical Clinic in Kosciuszko and Carthage and Trace Urgent Care in Kosciuszko. Renaissance Insurance is your neighborhood insurance partner. Renaissance Insurance makes you feel at home with your home insurance. When you hit the road, Renaissance Insurance makes sure it's with the right auto coverage tailored for you. Renaissance Insurance takes the hassle out of sorting through business insurance. One stop, complete coverage. Call Robbie Robertson, Bradley Tyler, or Michael Hatcher at 662-289-4621. Renaissance Insurance, Court Square, Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Top of the sixth inning, Ponatok 9, Kosciuszko 8, game three. Winner goes on to play Corinth, loser goes home. Philip Palmer Tree with you, the, the FG. With Breck Riley, voice of Whippet softball, a Whippet football. I, I told you when Ethan Wood hit that home run in the bottom of the first, we might have us a baseball game. <laughs> we got, We got one. We sure do. Eight runs on ten hits, one error for the Whippets. Nine runs, 11 hits, no errors for the Warriors. Top of the order due up. Clayton, Gardner, Ty Clayton, Gardner, and Deaton. Lefty in the batter's box, right-hander Will Carter. Fires one in from three-quarter arm slot that misses low, ball one. So we did see Jacob Nunn throwing some. Warm-up tosses. Look, it's might go there. That one nips the inside corner. Called strike. Good pitch from Carter. Yeah, that one came back in. Brought that in the front door. Um, one and one. Hit it a mile high in the air. Shallow center field. Powell coming in hard, and then he overran it. It goes behind him. And so safe at first, 
After making the big turn is Clayton on the error. Yeah, I so said that one That one was hit about a mile high, and, you know, Powell's got some speed, so once he gets the, his motor running, it can be hard for him to stop, and it just kind of you know, sailed on him just a little bit. Walt Gardner, the batter. Strikeout, single, hit by pitch, and he scored two runs. He's now the second baseman in the game. Hit in on the hands, but put in the gap. Nice jump on it from Ethan Wood, and he gets it for a, in shallow left center field for out number one. Yeah, as you said, good jump by uh, Ethan. I thought that that one could be trouble, but you know, Ethan, Ethan covers a little bit more ground than you think. That's a 6-4 frame that can cover a lot of ground quickly. He's had to run from some defensive linemen and some linebackers <laughs> in his career as a football player. Left-handed hitting Bryce De Deaton at the plate, and he looks at a pitch outside, ball one. One on, one out. Top of the sixth, sixth inning presented by Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts. Deaton waits on the pitch. He pops it up on the infield. Middle infielders calling for it. Uh, it's Landon Wallace's ball, and he puts it away for out number two. Yeah, he's about there. Yeah, John Robert Carnes coming up, and let me guess what's going to happen now. Wesley Dew coming out of that dugout saying intentional walk. Yeah, got to. But now he's calling time. He wants to talk to Will Carter first, so hang on. Don't write that in your scorebook yet. He may just be coming out to explain the scenario here. Inning started with an Clayton re reaching on an error on a mile-high pop-up. Looks like it will have a pitching change as looks like uh, – well, no, maybe not. We'll see. No, none anyway. wasn't going to come in. Yeah. Riles called him to come okay, in. Riles called him to come in. So, hold on. We're, we're just guessing right now. I can't imagine you'd pitch to, to Carnes. I can't imagine he sees anything at all. Unless they're going to try to run the old hidden ball trick over here. and Yeah, they're putting him on. Yeah, there's, there's the no, signal. There's zero chance that they're going to pitch to him. And the Whippet crowd <laughs> applauds. <laughs> zero chances you're pitching to – Good. Intentional walk issued I to John Robert Carnes. If you're just joining us, he's hit three home runs tonight <laughs> and driven in seven runs. Yeah. And, and that, those three long balls. May so. have just been Coach Dew like, yeah, Carter, we're going to walk him. Just, <laughs> just going out there just to calm him down. Like, yeah. you're, you're not going to pitch to him again. Here's Jabari Farr batting from the left side. Runners first and second. Pitch line to center field. Tracking it is Powell, and he puts it away. And the Whippets get through the top of the order, third time through. No runs, no hits, no errors. Runner stranded. And the Whippets hold them at a zero. We're in the middle of the sixth. They trail it nine to eight in game three. Back with the bottom of the sixth after we take this break. This Whippet playoff baseball continues. Wendy's famous four for four is heating up with a new spicy crispy chicken sandwich. The queen of spice is delivering that spicy chicken you love with lettuce and mayo between two deliciously soft buns. And yes, in classic four for four fashion, you can get all that spicy goodness with spicy or crispy nuggets, fries, and a drink to cool off, all for just four bucks. Is it getting hot in here? Or did Wendy's just deliver the hottest deal in fast food? We got you. Offer includes four-piece nuggets, junior fry, and value drink. Price participation may vary. When birthdays and special occasions arrive, Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts is the best place to shop for fashionable and classic gifts, home decor, jewelry, hobo purses, and wallets. They have new spring footwear and clothing arriving daily. And remember, Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts has the most recent wedding registry. Whether you're getting married or shopping for the bride and groom, shop Sullivan's. Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts, Highway 12 across from McDonald's in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Home half of the sixth. The Whippets trail by a run. Corbin Clayton 
back on the mound. He was brought in in relief in the fifth inning. Two in the first, three in the third, four in the fifth for Ponatok. Uh, all connected, not all the runs, but seven of them connected to long balls by John Robert Carnes. Whippet scored three in the first, one in the fourth, and then four in the fifth off the grand slam from Hayden Rogers. It narrowed the gap from nine uh, to four to nine to eight. So it is anybody's ball game. Four, five, and six hitters in the lineup due up for the Whippets, Wood, Fancher, Riles. Are you not entertained, Breck Riley? Yeah, I mean, I said we're gonna have a baseball game, right? You know, when in high school, when you get to these game threes, this is what you get. You get games like this where, you know, most teams at this level only have a one or two pitchers that, you know, they kind of count on. And by the time you get to the third, they're piecing it together. So you get, you get big innings. You get three runs in one inning, four runs in one inning, three runs in another inning. That's what happens in these game threes. So it's one of those, you know, like in the pros, you get it to game seven, anything can happen. Or you get it to game three, anything can happen. Young right-hander Corbin Clayton kicks and delivers. Gets check swing, but one around. Strike one. Pitch was down and away. Fooled Wood. He couldn't hold back on it, though. Wood with a three-run homer in the first. That one way inside on the hands. It gets called strike two. And... Yeah, Wood, Boy, that's awful. Yeah, Wood protests that one. He's, and then Wood got rung up on a, his last at bat on a his, pitch yeah, outside. In the third, in the third, that's right, yeah. 0 oh, 2. Catcher catch it, setting up way outside, and the waste one up and away. Wood said, I'm frustrated, but I'm not that frustrated. Yeah, I'm going to chase that one. 1 and 2, big exhale from Corbin. He looks over the top of his glove. And it gets into the motion. 1 and 2. In on the hands, and he felt like he had to swing at that one. He sent it foul toward the, the dugout on the third base side. Quick hands from Wood. He had to stop it. I think Carnes had to tie his shoe over at first base. Stop it and slow down and play there for a minute. The one two. And outside. Gets away from Williams, but no harm done. Nobody's on base. It's ball two. 2-2 two, two pitch coming up here. That one didn't put it where he wanted. Catcher set up outside. He came inside and a check swing foul straight down from Wood. Uh, Wood caught that one in on the, on the grip. At least he got a piece of it to stay alive. Pitch number seven at the, the at bat here. Two, two, here comes. Got him swinging, went after the high cheese. The high fastball. Said it, for some reason it, it comes up there, almost look like it's gift wrapped. Like it's here, here it's a present for you. And then it's just uh, open it and it's a box of air. Clayton's second strikeout of the evening. Larson Fancher up. Sullivan's drugs and gets the six inning sponsor for Whippet game three. Pitch. Up high to Fancher. Fancher's one for two with a walk. He got a good single back up the middle. Yeah, looks at ball two. Last at bat. Clayton facing his fifth whip at batter since being brought in from shortstop. Wastes away 3-0. and Not locating here. Clayton takes off his cap, readjusts things. Now he's set. Kick and delivery, 3-0, and oh, and it's way, 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 way outside. Ball four. Yeah, Williams going to walk the ball back out to his pitcher. Let's speak to him just a little bit. As none of those pitches were anywhere near the zone, anywhere near where Clayton or Williams wanted them. That's the third walk that he's given up. Got a pinch runner. For Fancher. 
Mansell. Yeah, Andrew Mansell in as the pinch runner, courtesy runner. One out, bottom of the sixth. Again, we want to thank Frank Chevrolet for bringing you the video broadcast tonight. If you hadn't caught on to that, you get to breezynews.com ASAP. Just search, just go to YouTube and search Bonswell Media, yeah. and the first thing See. to come up will be the live feed. There you go. One on, one out. Mansell at first. Cor Corbin Clayton's pitch up and in to Parker Riles. You got the student section out here doing the, the, the Texas A&M where they come. Ball five, ball six. It's been, it's been five straight from Clayton. And it's he, called strike. It's called strike. You know. Borderline pitch, <laughs> and that's being generous. Yeah. Well, that was a little, a little up and out. One and one. That's a called strike, and that one was a good pitch from Clayton. Good pitch there. Yeah, Clayton. So Clayton gets the advantage here, one and two. Parker Riles standing tall in that right-handed batter's box. Right-hander delivers. Excuse me, swing bounce towards short. Flip to second for one. But beating it out at first is Parker Riles and the lead runner cut down. Mansell retired six to four. Yeah, good job there by Riles scooting down the line as it was hit slow enough that it was not, they were not able to turn the double play. Cagle uh, had to wait on it just a little bit. And a good stretch by Carnes at first. Big man shows you what he can, he can move a little bit. Got some dexterity, but Riles able to leg it out. Will Carter hit by pitch his last time up. Trying to keep the sixth going. Whippets trail by a run, tying run at first. Parker Riles reached on the fielder's choice, and the pitch is inside to Carter for ball one. From the stretch, 1-0. That one a little bit up, 2-0. Yeah. That has been called a strike at some point I tonight. I wonder that in that general vicinity, that general neighborhood has been called a strike. Clayton's pitch popped him up, foul. Will it get out of play? It will. Sounded like it hit aluminum bleachers. Yep, two balls and a strike. Someone Not many empty spaces on that uh, aluminum bleacher. And someone threw it back in. Thank you. Like the visiting Pretty team neighborly. hit a home run. <laughs> the, <laughs> the pattern that I think I'm seeing with this home plate umpire is when a pitcher is struggling, he'll ex he'll open that zone a little bit, and I think you know just give that pitcher a little extra help. He's yeah. he's done and he's done it for both pitchers uh, a couple of times tonight. There've been some borderline pitches that he's given to the given to the defense there. Driven past the diving third baseman, bounces into left field for a base hit off the bat of Carter, and the inning continues. First and second, two out. Comes up Jacob Nunn, and I don't have my roster in front of me, but I believe that's Anthony Medine throwing some pitches behind the. They got number five. Yes, that's okay. Anthony. Yeah. Cooper Black going to come in. Run for Will Carter at first. Black the runner at first. Riles up there at second. Whippets trying to get a two out rally here. Down a run, the tying run is at second in the bottom of the sixth. And again, the Whippets need something good from the bottom of the order. Jacob Nunn 0 for two, the sack bunt, two strikeouts. Check of the runner, pitch to the plate. Down and in, Williams trying to frame it up. But a, a chant coming from the Whippet dugout of Whippet Magic. 
At least that's what it sounds like to me. Yep, that's what they're saying. <laughs> I, got my I know head, that one. I got my headphones on. It sounds like Whippet Magic. That's Whippet Magic. Need some right here. Again, a little frame job on a fastball low, but home plate umpire not giving that. 2 and 0. Oh. Williams behind the plate kind of giving a, you know, a can't sleeve. Believe you did that. Yeah, a sigh right there. And that one was closer than some of the calls have been. Miles takes his secondary lead and a nice pitch. Yeah, fastball called strike one. Finally got the one he wanted right there, did Clayton. He'd been working that spot, able to bring it up a little bit and get it in the zone. Wind kicking up a little bit, blowing out toward right center, right field. Hit in the air towards center field. Ty Clayton takes about three, maybe four steps in, hauls it in, and the Whippets uh, leave a couple of men on in the sixth. They trail 9-8. We just got one inning of baseball left. And Ponotok coming with the six, seven, and eight hitters in the seventh. We'll bring it to you as Whippet Baseball continues. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Atala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Atala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. Where can you get good neighbor service and surprisingly great insurance rates? At State Farm. Hi, I'm Michelle Nicholson, your local State Farm agent. My team and I at 116 North Jackson on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko are your one-stop shop in Itala County and surrounding areas for the service you deserve and the price you want. So stop looking around. My team and I at Michelle Nicholson State Farm are ready to help. Call us 662-289-5537 for your surprisingly great rates today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Boswell Media Sports. We start the seventh inning. Some defensive changes. Looks like Anthony Medine coming in at third base. Parker Riles moving over from first third to first. Yeah, with that was the second time that they brought out Fancher for a runner. So he's out. He yeah. can't come back in. So they had to do something to make a defensive change there. So we saw Medine warming up. We thought maybe for some pitching, which he can, but maybe more so just get him loose so he could come in and play the play the field. Will Carter came in with a runner on base in the fourth. He's working his third inning. Top of the seventh. Pontotoc 9, Kosciuszko 8 in game three. Everything on the line for these two teams. Pitch skied foul right side out of play by Jackson Williams to start off the seventh. Williams 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. One by Will Carter. Carter working from the windup. Here's the 0-1. Gets the outside corner called strike. Dropping the shoulders there is Jackson Williams. Yeah, big pitch there from Carter. Nothing in two. Pitch missed way off the plate. Try to get him to go out and chase one right there, but Williams disciplined at the plate. Riley Cagle in the on-deck circle for the Warriors. One, two, outside. Ramage tried to frame it in a little bit, but corner tightened up there. Yeah, that was a little outside, I think. Two balls, two strikes. Senior righty, Will Carter gets the sign. Here's the pitch. Swing and miss and strike out. Third K of the night. Whippet strikeouts tonight presented by Reliant Therapy. One out in the seventh. And the seventh inning of tonight's game three is presented by the Breakfast Show. Oh, yeah. Who you had to bribe to get that. Ooh, pitch got away from Carter. Hits Cagle. Ooh. Yeah, that one stings. 
So a little trip up to first for Cagle. First hit batter. Will Carter's walked a couple, struck out three. Batter is Corbin Clayton. Clayton's had a nice night at the plate. He's walked, he's doubled, singled. And single drove a run in in the fifth. With one on, Carter's pitch sails up. Once again, comes in a little bit. Carter might be rushing himself. Yep. Maybe a little bit here. Getting ball coming in, running arm side right now, 1 0. Oh. Line passed. The first baseman into right field. Hayden Rogers grabs it, gets it to the infield, first and second with one out. Just ball line, little low line drive that Riles couldn't get to. Yeah, he's holding the runner on at first right there. If he's not holding the runner on, he's probably able to knock it down. But, you know, you got you to play the averages there and keep your runner on. Three for four night for Corbin Clayton. That's a dozen base hits now for the Pontotoc Warriors who lead it nine to eight in the seventh. Warriors need to hold a zero right here. Called strike. Gus catches the black on the outside there to Braxton Whiteside. Whiteside has a single. And four trips to the plate. Give me three trips to the plate. Pitch way outside, great backhand by Ty Ramage on a pitch that just really got away from Carter. Yeah, that time uh, Carter, you know, Cagle out at second base toying with the mind of Carter a little bit there. One, one the count. Pitch on the way. High fastball, swung under it and missed, strike two. Yeah, just coming right after him is Carter. You peek ahead to the Bottom of the seventh, it'll be Hayden Rogers due up to lead off. And then Kalen Powell and Connor Wallace. Got to like that lineup coming to the plate in the seventh. Got some business to do here, and he ran it in on the inside. Foul tip caught by Ramage, strike three, and that's two away in the seventh. Big out there as we get back to the top of the order for the Warriors. Ty Clayton at the plate. He reached on an error last time. He scored a run, stolen a base tonight. Right versus left, the matchup. Runners first and second, two out. That was nearly a balk there, and he popped him up. Foul territory. Ramage chasing it, chasing it, chasing it, and then he overran it. How often have we said that tonight? Yeah. I got to tell you, I think Will Carter balked. Yeah, I, I wasn't. I was looking down here, but when I came back up, I saw a, I don't know about a balk or a little awkward, move, awkward motion. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know if it was a balk or yeah. the awkward motion on the mound. I, I, There's six sets of eyes that can call that, and that one particularly right behind him, who's the primary call, and he did not call. Uh, it. it was uh, crew chief flinched or it was it something happened on the mound. Yeah. I, I wasn't quite sure, but I saw it. But it's 0 and 1. To Ty Clayton, check of the runner. It's way up and way away. Two and one. Carter laboring here in the seventh. They're trying to just gut it out, get his team back to the dugout with a one run, with one run to make up. Runner way off. They throw, they pick him off at second. They got Cagle leaning back at second, and good job by Carter to recognize it, throw it back to short, and the pickoff ends the inning, retires the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Whippets trail by one, going to the seventh with the season on the line. Nine, one, and two coming up. Stay right where you are, and we'll bring it to you here on Boswell Media Sports. Vehicle maintenance is often a hassle and occurs at the most inconvenient times. Central Tire Service enjoys vehicle maintenance and focuses on getting you back on the road from brakes, alignments, and exhaust to oil changes or new and used tires for your vehicle or ATV. Central Tire Service stocks all the major brands, Kenda, Toyo, Firestone, and Goodyear. They specialize in accessories for your truck or ATV and install rough country lift kits. 
Central Tire Service, across from Louvelle on Highway 35 in Kosciuszko. You bought lumber and you're ready to start digging post holes for that new fence, but not so fast. Do you know where your underground utilities are located? Central Electric Power Association urges you to call 811 for a free marking of underground electric lines and other utilities. Making the call before you dig can prevent a serious or fatal injury, plus it's the law in Mississippi. And please work safely around power lines. Central Electric Power Association, serving you since 1937. This institution is an equal opportunity provider and employer. Boswell Media Sports. The sounds of Devo filling the ballpark at the Itala County Fairgrounds. Crack that whip. Give the pass a slip. And the Whippets are going to try to slip a run in here in the seventh and try to keep this thing going. Two would win it, one would tie it. Bottom of the seventh inning. Here we go, and Hayden Rogers, who has the big cut tonight, grand slam home run in the fifth, and made it a 9-8 ball game. He leads off, then Kalen Powell and Connor Wallace. Corbin Clayton, the pitcher. He's worked through a couple of jams. Brought in after the Rodgers home run. He's walked three, he's given up just one base hit, and there's a called strike on a pitch that was, well, not a strike. Opened him up off speed there. Thought it was a little low. Corbin Clayton's pitch off the plate, but swinging strike two from Hayden Rodgers. He took a big cut. So Clayton ahead 0-2 quickly, the pitch on the way. Got him to chase one down and in, and out on three pitches is Aiden Rodgers. Boy, Clayton showing you some gusto right there, coming right after Rodgers, who just hit a, a grand slam his last at bat. So, yeah, big, big move by Clayton. We'll get back to the top of the order. Caleb Powell at the plate. Two for three with a walk. He chases one, kind of chops it on the grass. Going to be hard to get him there, but a nice throw from the pitcher, Corbin, and they get him out by about a step and a half. Yeah, Clayton did a good job fielding his position. I think Powell kind of caught up something. It looked like he kind of tripped up about three-quarters up the line there. He didn't fall down or anything, but he, he definitely didn't look like he ran it cleanly. So three pitches and two outs, and all of a sudden the Whippets are down to their final out. And yet Connor Wallace. Do Coach Dew talking to Connor Wallace. Connor Wallace had the game-winning RBI on Saturday night's game two, a three-run shot in the seventh. Connor Wallace at the plate, bases empty, two outs. The Whippets down to their last out, season on the line. Pitch to the plate, called strike. Good pitch from Clayton. Right, Clayton has ice water in his veins here. Clayton the game. He fires it in again quickly. Gets a breaking ball, called strike at the knees. And the Whippets are down to their last strike. Here's the 0-2. Down and away, gets away from Williams. I think he's going to see... Some breaking balls here. He's already seen two of the three pitches have been breaking balls. And Clayton liked. He keeps wanting to get some specific ball that he wants. One ball, two strikes, bases empty, two out, bottom of the seventh. Whippets down, nine, eight in game three. Pitch coming. Outside and Potatoc fans wanted that one. It was, yeah, it was well out. off the plate. Yeah, outside. Yeah, I'd tell you if it was close. It two was two the count. Pitch on the way. Yeah, Called strike it. three. Got him looking, and that's the ball game. Potatoc gets the Whippets to go down one two three very quickly in the seventh. They walk away with. 
the series win, winning the two games in Kosciuszko. And they'll move on to face Corinth in the third round of the playoffs. The Whippet season comes to a screeching halt here at home. We've got the Wendy's post game coming up, and we'll get set for that. So hang on. There's more coming, more Whippet playoff baseball after this. Hello. This Reliant Physical Therapy always provides attentive, focused, and compassionate care for every patient to restore you back to your functional level. Physical therapist Haley Kewen and Adam Bell, along with assistants Veronica Wolfarth and Becca Shields Hayden, offer outpatient physical therapy and post op care for all ages and circumstances. Oh, yeah, Quality yeah, yeah. care and attentive time. When you need physical therapy, request Reliant Physical Therapy in Kosciuszko. In the Megs Plaza, Highway 35 in Kosciuszko. Transforming lives physically and spiritually. Vehicle maintenance is often a hassle and occurs at the most inconvenient times. Central Tire Service enjoys vehicle maintenance and focuses on getting you back on the road from brakes, alignments, and exhaust to oil changes or new and used tires for your vehicle or ATV. Central Tire Service stocks all the major brands, Kenda, Toyo, Firestone, and Goodyear. They specialize in accessories for your truck or ATV and install rough country lift kits. Central Tire Service, across from Louvelle on Highway 35 in Kosciuszko. Your pharmacist is more than someone who fills your prescriptions. Your pharmacist helps you understand what medications you're taking. Your pharmacist makes sure your insurance is filed correctly. And your pharmacist answers any other questions you may have regarding your medications. Hi. I'm Rob Pickle, registered pharmacist and owner of Pickle's Drugstore. It is my goal to give you the personal attention you need to improve your health and well-being. My staff and I are here to serve you. Pickle's Drugstore, yes, your hometown pharmacy, on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko. Renaissance Insurance is your neighborhood insurance partner. Renaissance Insurance makes you feel at home with your home insurance. When you hit the road, Renaissance Insurance makes sure it's with the right auto coverage tailored for you. Renaissance Insurance takes the hassle out of sorting through business insurance. One stop, complete coverage. Call Robbie Robertson, Bradley Tyler, or Michael Hatcher at 662-289-4621. Renaissance Insurance, Court Square, Kosciuszko. <laughs> Boswell Media Sports. Here we are for the Wendy's post game and the final one of the 2022 season as Pontotoc comes into the fairgrounds in Kosciuszko and defeats the Whippets 9-8 to eight in game three in this second round series. They win it two games to one, and they'll move on to play Corinth in the next round, the Whippets season. Comes to an end, 17 wins, 10 losses overall. The team won the championship of Region 4, going undefeated. And uh, certainly got something to be proud of there. But, of course, uh, you're never happy when the playoff run ends. And this one, uh, this one just ended by just a hair. Yeah, it's a, one of those games that you hate that somebody has to lose the ball game, but that's, you know, it's the nature of athletics, the nature of competition. Somebody does. Both teams uh, played very well, you know, but you know, at the end of the day, somebody's got to win. Somebody's, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately got to go home uh, unhappy, but uh, a great ball game between two uh, really, really good, good ball teams. Two runs in the top of the first off of John Robert Carnes' uh, home run after an RBI ground out. Gave Pontotoc the early lead, but the Whippets responded with a big home run blast from Ethan Wood, led it 3-2 after one. Then the guests went up 5-2 uh, to two with a three-run inning off a home run from, guess who, John Robert Carnes. Whippets uh, didn't answer that till the bottom of the fourth when they got a single run, but uh, then, the t then the fifth inning, things really got going. Four runs by each team in the fifth inning. Another Carnes home run. That went over the scoreboard in right center field, and they had a seven. They had a nine to four lead at that point. But credit the Whippets; they got runners on base in the bottom of the inning, and then the grand slam from Hayden Rogers brought the Whippets back to within one at nine to eight. In the sixth, the Whippets uh, stranded a couple of runners on base, but then in the seventh uh, went down one, two, three with a couple of strikeouts, and that was the end of the ball game. Uh, win. Credited to, um, to Pound. Garrett Pound gets the win. And, of 
Corbin Clayton with ice in his veins getting the save over three innings of work and uh, taking the loss tonight. Larson Fancher, uh, losing pitcher in tonight's ball game. Unhappy totals uh, like this, nine runs, 12 hits for the Warriors. They played errorless baseball, eight runs on 11 hits for Kosciuszko, and they committed one error, stranded eight on the base paths. Pontotoc stranded five in the ball game. So that, uh, let's look at it, um, just a couple of other things, couple of base hits, uh, multi-base hit nights for Kalen Powell, for Connor Wallace, and also for Will Carter, and for Hayden Rogers, and home runs on the night for Ethan Wood and for Hayden Rogers. Uh, Hayden with four RBI on a two for three night. But uh, Whippets are out there in left center field and uh, a lot of hard work. A lot of energy, a lot of determination. Uh, things come to a disappointing end in the second round. Uh, yeah, and uh, as we just said earlier, it's one of those things that somebody's got to, you know, somebody's going to be disappointed at this, at this time of year. It doesn't matter, you know, if you if you bow out in the second round or third round, fourth round, you know, uh, only one team is going to end up being you know, happy at the, at the end of it. And uh, Pontotoc, the Warriors' credit, they have the – Opportunity to do that. Now, whippet season going to come come to an end. So, Pontotoc and Corinth next round. And the other side of the bracket, it's going to be West Lauderdale and Mooreville uh, left in the north. And uh, whippet softball goes on. Uh, we'll talk about that before we, before we sign off uh, tonight. Hello, this is Dr. Paul Gundy of Autumn Ridge Dental. And we salute the Kosciuszko Whippet player of the game. And now that's something to smile about. Tonight's Autumn Ridge Dental Player of the Games in this final ball game of the senior year is going to be awarded to the 2022 senior class. That's something of a tradition that we do here at Boswell Media Sports. So we'll uh, mention all these seniors who have uh, meant so much to this Whippet program through the years. That's uh, Braylon Albritton, Will Carter, Anthony Medine, Kalen Powell, Hayden Rogers, Parker Riles, Connor Wallace, and Ethan Wood, senior class of the 2022 Region 4 4A champion Kosciuszko Whippets. Season comes to an end tonight at home in the second round in a game three, 9-8 loss to Pontotoc. Um, let's uh, talk Whippets softball for a second before the Wendy's post game comes to an end, Breck. And uh, Lady Whippets, uh, their season continues. Uh, third round coming up, game one on Friday. Yeah, on right? Friday, barring, you know, there's some weather coming in on Friday, maybe a change in the schedule, but the scheduled ball games would be Friday, Saturday, and game three on Monday, and uh, depending on who's on the other side of the bracket, depends on where we'll be. If Pontotoc is able to win game three tomorrow, uh, then game one would be in Pontotoc on Friday, game two uh, Saturday here in Kosciuszko, game three if needed back in Pontotoc. Now, if Caledonia wins uh, that Series game one would be here in Kosciuszko, game two at Caledonia, and game three back here on uh, on Monday if needed. So it's a, a lot to, you know, kind of uh, work through there. But we understand that game was uh, uh, canceled tonight. It was supposed to be in Pontotoc, but uh, rain uh, rained out that game up in North Mississippi. So they will play uh, that game uh, tomorrow, which, you know, I'm sure Coach Tony Terry and the Whippets are loving that they you know, good. Don't have as much rest time as the uh, as the Lady Whippets will uh, will get, uh, but yeah, the Lady Whippets are moving on to the third round of the playoffs. They'll uh, th place the winner Pontotoc Caledonia. Big two game series uh, win over Itawamba AHS. Uh, little trouble with uh, Lady Indians 12-4 a win, and then a one hitter nine strikeout performance and a three to nothing win from uh, Anna Grace uh, Whitehead. So, uh, Coach Tony Terry and the Lady Whippets going to be. Rolling on, and now we'll have those games for you on Breezy 101. Well, this being our last baseball broadcast of the year, it's time to say some thank yous as well. Let's say first thank you to our sponsors who've been with us through the season and here in the playoff run. Um, and I'll read some of them off here one last time. Just as a reminder to our uh, listeners and viewers, uh, y'all need to do business with these folks and uh, show your appreciation. Tell them uh, you appreciate their sponsorship of Whippet Baseball, a serve pro, been with us for a long time, Premier Medical, Holmes Community College, Central Electric Power Association, Itala County Co-op, Reliant Therapy, P 
Pickles Drugstore, Michelle Nicholson State Farm, Frank Chevrolet, Central Tire Service, Atala County Bank, Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts. Give the breakfast show a shout as well, 6 to nah. 9. Yeah, you, can, you can listen to him if you want to. <laughs> guy's kind of a knucklehead. The <laughs> Wendy's and what's well, an acquired taste, yeah, we'll say. Exactly. It's an acquired taste. Kind of like black coffee or beer. <laughs> an acquired taste. Wendy's and Autumn Ridge Dental. Thanks to all of you. Uh, business owners in the community for back in Whippet Baseball. Uh, thanks to everybody with Boswell Media. I've got my producer director right here who was on the air with me tonight. Thanks, Breck. Always great to work with you, and you do so much that people don't realize to get uh, all these softball, baseball, uh, football broadcasts on the air. Yeah, we appreciate uh, you know all the folks uh, with the Whippet uh, program, Coach McBride, you know, coming out and doing the Surf Pro Coaches Show. All the all the folks up here do the hard work. You know, Brad Riles and the rest of them here in the in yep. the press box that you know kind of help us out, give us some notes when we we can't see who come in left field. Yep. You know, that tell us this player and that player, and tell us maybe what happened on the weekend series that we weren't able to get to, and and all that. So there's a lot of a lot mm-hmm. of moving parts for yep. what we do. We yep. you know we're the ones that are the voices, but there's a whole lot of folks in the background that do a lot of work. <laughs> A lot of friendships, a lot of good relationships over a long time. So uh, thankful for that. We appreciate uh, Melissa, Laura, Ashley, uh, Lisa, Bemo. We appreciate our uh, our studio uh, our studio our studio ops. Uh, we appreciate uh, Billy Steen, who's been with us some. Uh, Evan Miles and Donald working tonight. Thanks to uh, Frank Chevrolet for the video. Uh, coverage of the second round of the playoffs. We appreciate them stepping up and doing a little extra here in the postseason. So thanks to the folks at uh, Frank Chevrolet and our executive producer, Johnny Boswell, uh, for uh, all of them. And that leaves it back to me. And uh, sixth straight season that I've been the voice and ninth season overall that I've done it uh, with Whippet Baseball. It sure is fun. Hope it uh, brings some happiness to you to uh, be able to follow these games, particularly those of you who live out of town or just can't get here on a regular basis. And it's a real joy to do this. We appreciate to all of you because none of this matters if you don't listen. So that's all the thanks and all the wrap-up for the Wendy's post game. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back with you, Lord willing, for the 2023 season. Whip it playoff softball continues on Friday night on Breezy 101. So follow that. So uh, with all that being said, Here's the good night and the sign-off for the 2022 season. Until we meet again, grace and peace, and go whip it to all of you. Good night.